Hey guys, we have, we got Jay with Definition Cigars and uh, we want to see how you doing, brother. Man, super solid. Uh, bro, I appreciate the opportunity. To come oh, in. dude, we've been looking forward to this. Yeah. We've been like, dude, hurry up and get down here. Right. And now you're here. Hey, so before we go any further, um, it would only be right, man, from a definition perspective for us to um, bless you with a little bit of that oh. goodness. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. So that is an unreleased cigar. Um, probably, I'm already liking the pigtail right yeah, here. Pigtail. It, so that cigar may not be in the same shape, form, whatnot, but the blend is the blend. So, um, so know, this is an unreleased. Completely. Man, I love smoking unreleased cigars, completely, man. Completely, completely. We wanted to bless you with that. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. What's the wrapper on it? Can you tell that or is that top secret? Sumatra. Whoo, I love a Sumatra, man. I, yeah. You know what? I got to pour myself some more coffee because Sumatra and coffee for me. Right. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, get a part of that. Get get on to that. Um, there'll probably be something that um, probably um, the folks will see maybe at the end of the summer, early fall. But, yeah, it's something we're sitting on right nice. now. Nice. Yeah. Nice, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You guys are always surprising me. You know, I haven't even known you guys in cigar life. I haven't not known y'all that long. Right. And you've surprised me over and over. Like I was telling you earlier, you sent me some new cigars and I opened up the box and there's a Lancero in there. My first thought was, oh, man, he sent me a Lancero. Mm -hmm. Turns out I loved it. You guys call it the walking stick. Right. I normally don't like Lanceros. It's, it, well, I won't say I don't like them, but they're just not my go-to sure. because I don't know why. But when I smoked that one, me and Bryant were like going off on the right. show. We were like, dude, this Lancero's got it going on. And so now you got me a unreleased cigar. I can't wait, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, no, thank you. Um, you know, we was talking off camera a little bit. Um, it's... It's 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 one of those things when when you and I talked on the phone, right? So people do, people do not have to do um, anything that they they don't want to. Um, the good Lord has all blessed us with the ability to have just free will. We do what the, we would do. We do what we want to. We're, we're we're not confined to anything. So in terms of definition cigars, what you and um, Bryant have done and just smoking and sharing how you guys feel about our cigars uh, has been amazing uh to start off with it's um something that is refreshing especially in this industry because a lot of times folks want something to be able to do something and you guys uh, never never did that you you just smoked our cigars and, and shared them with um the following that that the cigar talk podcast has is that is super dope it's it's, it's 16 17 thousand uh, members on on instagram and and there's another following on on, on facebook and you guys have a a platform where you just insulate folks who want to be about what you guys are about. So long story short is the appreciation for that man goes further than us smoking cigars and me sharing that. So well, thank you. and let me tell you this though, like we are always on the hunt for good cigars. Mm -hmm. And when we find them, I mean, in the, there's a ton of good cigars, Sure, but when you find a really good cigar, and you get excited about it, you want to share it because you want other cigar smokers to be able to experience what you're experiencing. Right. And, I mean, you can go down to any cigar shop and you can find a good cigar. But I want, I'm always on the lookout for something special. And right. what you guys are doing is special. And so when I found your cigar, and it was completely by dumb luck that I found your cigars because I was at a cigar shop and I was doing a show there, and the guy was like, hey, yeah, go in and pick out, you know, eight, nine, ten cigars, and then we'll do the show. And I didn't know before I went in there that he wasn't going to charge me for the cigars. <laughs> and so I went in there and picked out cigars that I was going to buy. Right. And as I'm walking out, I see this blue band that I'd never seen before, and I was like, they caught my eye. And I looked down at the cigars, and then I immediately didn't notice the band anymore because this oily wrapper, beautiful yeah. stick was like, 
okay, I don't know what this is, but I need to smoke it because it reminded me of the glory days of LFD in a cabinet six. Yes. It was that beautiful of yes. a stick. And everybody knows that in the heyday of LFD when they were on their game, and I'm not knocking them. I normally do, but I'm not going to knock them today. Okay. But back in the day, the Cabinet 6 was the pinnacle of what I thought a good cigar, a great cigar should be. Okay. And when I saw your stick, I was like, that's a beautiful stick. It doesn't even need a band. But the fact that you don't have a paper band and it has something that caught my eye just drew me in. And I was like, oh. So I picked up three or four of those sticks. And then I... He was like, oh, yeah, those are on the house. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I came back from Dallas, and I was smoking these cigars that you guys had. And I was like, holy shit, these are good. Right, these right. are not just beautiful. They are really good. And the band was like, cool, because, but I had no idea what the name of your cigars were. Sure. So I'm here in the back of the leaf telling these guys about your cigars, but I don't know what they're called. I right. just know that I scored. And all of a sudden, here comes this dude I've never met before. And Jay at the Leaf is introducing me to this guy named Neo, which mm -hmm. I don't know him from a hole in the wall. And he's handing out a few sticks, and he reaches out to hand me one, and it's got one of your bands on it. And I was like, I know those. I know those. I know those sticks. Yeah. And I was like, I got no idea what the name of them are, but I know they're good. And then all of a sudden, man, I'm hanging out talking with Neo. Right. And at that time, I didn't know you were Chad. Sure, sure, sure. But I was excited to share your cigars because it was something completely refreshing and new, but still old school in the fact that it was quality. Right, right. And when you find that combination, you're like, I'm in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 um, that's that's awesome on on, on a bunch of different levels for me personally, but. I mean, the cigars, we were intentional about the band. Uh, you and I talked a, a little bit last night about um, the DC. Speaking for definition cigars, there, there's there's uh, no one face. There's no no guys that are, are um, representative of it. It's that that DC that it, it's it's that um, it's that seal. It's 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 that armor that we always stand behind because we want people to recognize that it's definition cigars it's it's the brand it's it's not um you know a person so to speak or people in in terms of us because it's five of us um we 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 want folks to um enjoy the cigars we're, we're cigar guys so enjoy the cigars and then we go from there. But let me tell you, man, when you get a guy like me excited, I mean, <clears throat> and and guys already know, I, I smoke in a neighborhood of somewhere between seven to ten cigars a day. Sure. So when I get excited about a cigar, it's something special. Right, right. So I got to have a drink. Please do. <laughs> <clears throat> and I am drinking the old George Dickel. Man, the old George Dick would drive you out a little bit, a little bit, huh? <clears throat> Something, but uh, no, man. I I found your cigars, and it was just, it was something really that just blew me away. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like something that I'd had before, mm -hmm. but the beauty of the cigar itself just was drew me to it. And then once I smoked it, I was like, "Wow, who yeah. are these guys?" Right. And then when I found out you were a new company, I was like. That's one of the things I bragged on y'all about. I was like, most of the time a new company comes to market, you're not bringing A-game sticks. Sure. You're bringing good sticks, sure. Right. But not something that's hitting it out of the park. Right. So that's why I was just like, holy crap, the level of cigars these guys are making, being a new company, you know, you expect decent cigars. Right. You guys knocked it out, though. Yeah, and and that comes from um, Rob. So we took six months. So the company officially launched in January 2019, but the idea uh, around Definition Cigars started in June of 2018, and we took six months and went 
through the process of what was going to be uh, what was going to be our definition. Um, the definition of cigars, the, the name of the company, is it by accident. It's intentional to say that with all of the taglines of the cigar culture and what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do with it, um, what we always say to our customers, to our retail partners, is that you define who you are as a cigar smoker. You define the culture. You define who you are in that instance to smoke a cigar, whether it's the garbage man or the Fortune 500 uh, company CEO. You define if you want to drink vodka, if you want to drink coffee, if you want to do this or that. You know, if you are fresh off work, come in the shop and feel comfortable with smoking. Grab a definition cigar if it makes you feel better. But in terms of the cigar culture, be comfortable. Define your own path because there is no one thing that says you're a cigar smoker versus you're not. Right. Cigars are cigars. Right. And enjoy There's no those. right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. But definition cigars and who we are and our ownership group, we want to put that out in the forefront for people to understand and believe in that. Believe that. You know, um, you'll see us at a cutting light suited and booted, you know, with, you know, suits on and, 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 and flat bottom shoes. And but you'll also see us in T-shirts and sneakers and jeans as well. It's it's we define. Um, Let me ask you this. Are you all going to be in suits tonight? Um, we are going to be in um, onesies tonight. Rompers. Definition rompers. I can't wait to see that. I would like to get a picture with each one of you guys, right, you right. know. It's going to have the ass out. <laughs> well, let's make sure we're facing forward. So, cause, like, cause, like, like, the, like the old school saddle, you, you know what I mean? The, the, the uh, deals that they, they had on the legs and, and ass in the back. Yeah. Know? The nah. chaps. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. But not so, really. no, because I'm going to let you know, like you saw what I was wearing last night. Shorts, flip flops. Right. That's what I'll be wearing tonight. That's that's my uniform. That's it. <laughs> right. Because if I'm in flip flops and shorts, I'm relaxed. Man, and if I'm relaxed, that's how I enjoy there my cigar. Go. If I got to go. dress up, man, now don't get me wrong. When I do have to dress up, I'm still smoking cigars, but I'm not as comfortable as I could be. But, Rob, that's the thing with with the cigar culture. And, and it's grown um, as as the years go by. In different cities, you see, you know, people just settling in, just being who they are. But for the most part. It is a thing to, okay, you, you see a group of guys sitting at the table and those guys may have on sneakers and gym shorts or, or what have you. And, and you don't know where they came from to get to this point and in, in being a cigar smoker. Those guys could be all millionaires. Right. But they decided to, to come to the cigar shop and have a cigar in the middle of wherever they're going with their day. So the cigar culture in a lot of cases – you, you walk in there and say, oh, those guys are, are fad smokers or those guys aren't truly about what the lifestyle is. There's no defined lifestyle, man. Right. What did you say? There there's, is none. There's it's, no it's, defined because guys that come in wearing suits. That's cool. That if, is. If, if that's what they want to do, if there's guy and I'll tell you this, there's been times in the wintertime when I go down to the leaf early in the morning to have my coffee and a cigar and I'm still in my PJs. And I walk in, and I know there's been some guys like, who the hell is that? Yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. like, I got on uh, red and black flannel PJ bottoms and a T-shirt, That's and I'm coming is. to smoke. Hey, Rob, we would call that defining pajamas. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, I, I'm so thankful that Jay lets me come smoke in my PJs. But, you know... I only do that in the wintertime when it's cozy. You know what I mean? But that's but, how I enjoy it. Now, if I'm going to an event, I'm going to dress up a little bit. We get it. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's all perspective of the person. But the foundation of what we say is just be comfortable. Just smoke. Right. Enjoy your smoking in, in whatever setting that is befitting to yourself. If just I can't be as comfortable as I am here in the studio... I'm not going anywhere because I'm you. You know, you're in here right now. You can just be yourself, man. We had music soul child in here. You had you. I mean, you jamming. Yes, that that that's us. That 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 settles us. Um, you know, 
um, some folks like Little Jazz or or you know some some Frank you know Sinatra my stuff. my genre is across the entire spectrum except. Right. Except for new country, if you listen to new country, you do not listen to music that is not music. I I, I have no frame of reference. So. Well, well, I, I, one day, let me just tell you, I accidentally flipped on some new country today, and the verse was chewing tobacco, chewing tobacco, chewing tobacco, spit, and I was like, that's Blake Shelton. That's why he sucks. Hey, there there's some new hip hop that we we we're, we're not, you know, you know, somebody's saying. Got to get the bag. Here we go. Let me, let me tell you. This is my favorite. Pony? Yeah. Genuine? You know why? Listen to that. Hey. 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 That's it. Dude, I opened up the door and let the neighbors down the block <laughs> jam out to some pony, baby. You, you, hey, man. They, they ain't young enough to still make babies. <laughs> I don't know, man. I know they got a lot of kids already, so okay, maybe. Okay, man. You may be doing something for their life, though, right? Hey, that's that's giving back to the culture. Absolutely, man. So I, I asked the other guys already about right. their life before cigars. Let's dive into yours a little bit. Sure. So let's reference. How old are you now? I'm 41 Woo. years old. You wearing glasses yet? No. It's coming, brother. It's coming. <laughs> I'm just letting you know yeah. it's coming. I just squint. I, I, I just so so so. Me and my dad um, went out to eat um, maybe a month ago, and my dad takes the menu and puts it out here. And I'm like, Yo, pops, like, don't you think you should bring it closer if you can't see it? No. And he says, No, son. The closer it gets, I can't see. It. <laughs> this is this is better here. So. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, you get there. I didn't start wearing glasses till I was 46, but I needed them at 40. Because hmm. I was like, you don't want to cover this up, you know. You can't with... cover up. Man, you got to preserve the sexy. <laughs> right, man. You and gotta... then what P. Diddy did said? <laughs> That's right. You, you got to preserve the sexy. Up, man. So, what, well, first of all, where'd you grow up? Yeah, grew up in um, Northern Virginia. Uh, probably it's about 50 miles outside of Washington, D.C., Rob, I've been around cigars and pipe tobacco since I can remember. Yeah, if you were out that way, that was a big cigar industry. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather, um, I mean, smoked cigars, and 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 I I grew up in 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 my in my grandparents' home, and then he, he smoked cigars. He he ordered from Thompson Cigar Company back in the day. Uh, he was smoking Garcia Vegas when. Wow, it was still a good cigar, and uh, you know, in the, in the winter time, uh, he would go out on the on the front porch and and fire up his his pipe. Um, so, you know, the levels of cigars. Um, as a kid, I wasn't uh, abreast, so to speak, but it it was it's been always uh, around me since since before I can. Now, does your remember. dad smoke cigars? It was my grandfather, my my, my grandparents. Um, Along with uh, along with my mom, you know, it, it takes a village to um, raise a child, right? So um, that was that was where I lived um, there, and, and cigars have been a part of my life. Forever. So, so you grew up very close with your grandparents. Very so, close, when yeah. you say you're old school, you got old school from your grandparents' exactly. point of view. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my, a that's a that's a that's a blessing because, dude. People in that generation, oh I mean, hey. you got bombarded with the good stuff. Hey, Rob, I'm 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 old school. Till I graduated senior year in high school, and I graduated in '97, we still had um, plastic on the couches <laughs> in the living room. Uh, my, my my grandfather was a truck driver, and when he would come off the road in his first meal in the house, every meal, um, my grandmother put down a, a table setting. Fork, knife, spoon, hot tea, iced tea. My grandfather sat there and and read the newspaper. That is what I know. I, I mean, and and it's it's probably a little bit of a detriment to who I am in in twenty twenty one as far as no go. no no. That's not but detriment, man. I'm man. Like, man, I I, I smoke certain blessing. shit. Man, <laughs> fix my plate. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> not on no bullshit, but j just man, that that's, that's what I grew up. Man, I mean, I man, like. Hey Rob, it got down. It goes. It goes as deep as my grand. My grandmother. 
hot iron my grandfather's boxer shorts. Really? Man, old school shit. Dude, let me tell you. My mother put so much starch while she was ironing my dad's oh, jeans. Oh, Niagara? Dude, they stand up on their own. Hey, Rob, I used to be at the bus stop not being able to move. Hey, between the flies and the bugs in, in the early morning and in the summer times in, in, in Virginia. So, you know, as kids, we we adopted the thing is, is that, man, so back in the day, you wore that skin so soft. <laughs> right. Avon lotion. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I, I come from a black household. Hey, man. I know my, Avon. I know man, Avon. My, she, my grandma was getting that stuff. Hey. So you stand at the bus stop and you put your hands up high in the air. That's the highest point that, that, that the gnats would go. So you stand there at the bus stop with the skin so soft on and with these starch jeans. I mean, it, it was, I mean, it was just bad. I like now, it. see, you're so young that to get the old school with the age that you were, right? did the other kids make fun of you? We all grew up <laughs> in the same neighborhood. Everybody else's mama was okay. Doing okay. Hey, everybody else's mom, I had, everybody else's mama was starching their jeans like that. And you know, we it started starting to change a little bit, Rob. So you like you don't want to go to school with creases down the middle of your Oh pants. right, right. I mean you 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 can't bend over. Right. Right? You I mean you it, could it, it but just you was, know what those starch jeans, man, you could sharpen a blade on them. Rob, my grandmother was so not only that. They were clothesline dried, so they was already hard. Right, I remember, man. I remember. <laughs> Rob, they was already hard, and then you, you you go ahead and spray a little bit of Niagara on them, and put that hot iron. I mean, you cannot win, man. You, you want to talk about flexibility and dexterity? Not being there, man. Shit. So I don't I don't know how much cigar talk you've heard, but you know Bryant grew up in East St. Louis. Okay. And Bryant was, when we first started talking, he was like, oh, you don't know, man. I grew up in the projects. Right. And I said, dude, I grew up in the projects, too. And he was like, bullshit. And I said, the only difference was I grew up in the white projects. Do you know what the white projects are? Trailer. Boom. <laughs> See, you know, man, I grew man. up in the trailer park, baby. I mean, that's that's his project as you can get. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I it's funny because I used to walk a mile or 1.2 miles to kindergarten. I crossed the highway when I was five. Kenny, did you have somebody with you? Well, the other kids that were my age. Man, y'all, y'all just a squad. Just we, a mob. Just, we just walked. You're just a mob. Yeah, and Shit. you know, I was like, dude, that's how it was. We didn't, right. you know, you know, my mom stayed home, but she didn't take us to school. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it was. I, I remember. Um, it, it, Rob, and it's funny the shit that you remember, mm-hmm. right? I'm 41. I remember walking five miles with my grandmother to go and, and pay my school fees to start school. And that's just the way it was. Man, that's the way it was. My grandmother never drove. Um, so my grandmother cooked everything from scratch, never dried a, dried a, a piece of clothing. It was all clothesline. Oh, see, um, we got it. We got a dryer in about 1980. She didn't ever want it. <laughs> she ironed everything. Well, why would you want one if you're going to iron everything? She ironed everything. Yeah. Now, we, we, as kids, me and, me and my older cousin um, lived in that house, and and Rob, like, we didn't get the uh, we didn't get the treatment that my granddaddy got with with ironing our boxes and and that sort of thing. But it man, everything. Well, no, because I mean, you're not the king of the house. Undershirts. Iron, yeah, Niagara. <laughs> but going back to your point, just cigars um, in general um, was was the thing um, in, in in that household uh, for me. M- my grandfather and and if any of my other cousins ever ever heard this uh, this part of the podcast, um, they probably feel some type of way. But man, I was my grandfather's guy. I mean, we did everything. Y'all hung together, together man. And that was my guy. We did everything together. Um, so I, I was blessed enough to have a little bit of athletic uh, talent. Um, and before every uh, home basketball game or, or or away, you know, high school basketball, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are, are the big nights. Um, we always went out to McDonald's and had a quarter pounder with cheese. That, that Same here, thing. bro. That, that was, was like. Thing. That was our thing. Yeah. My dad that used to take thing. me and he'd be like. I'd get ready to order, and he's like, "You want to get the quarter pounder?" Yep, that, you know, that, Rob. That that was our thing, and, and we never talked hoops, and we, and we never talked 
anything anything uh, of that sort because my grandfather wasn't an athlete, but he was uh, um, intentional about our relationship. So he always spent that time with me uh, before we went out there, and and you know he would you know smoke a cigar on the way to to McDonald's and fire back up, you know, when we got back and, you know, around Christmas time, Rob, he, he always had the uh, high test moonshine nice. for the neighborhood to come by. That was, that was the thing there with, with my, with my family and, and in, in our, our neighborhood, everybody knew to come by Mr. Hackley's house um, and have a shot of moonshine with him around the holidays. So nice. and cigars have just been a, a part of my, part of my thing and and my grandfather passed unfortunately in 2006 and uh, i was 19 20 at the time and still wasn't wasn't actively smoking cigars then and now when you when you got around cigars mm -hmm. for the first time as a man did the smell of those cigars take you back it did it, it um hey, pull that up a little bit in front of you bro i became emotional yeah i, I did i be i became um I became extremely emotional and and i'll tell you when the first time so i was in uh, columbus ohio at the time um smoking i was living there and it wasn't a cigar lounge it was a club and cigars were welcomed in that club and you know we're smoking and at the time i'm a i'm a fad smoker i happened to pick up a cigar and x y and z and i just uh thought back to my childhood but it, it really resonated when i moved to dallas and I'd been smoking a little bit, you know, kind of getting more involved, more involved. I, I, I've always smoked cigars just because I was around it, but being serious about it, Rob. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, and, and still to this day, still to this day, I have moments, um, where I become emotional, uh, emotional about cigars. My grandfather passed in December, um, of 2006 and you know i get around the uh early parts of december on, on the date that he passed and i i mean cigars are just i mean it's 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 it's, it's a part of me it's oh yeah this this version of me that you know um isn't the man that that you see without cigars being involved in my life it just 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 isn't um times for my grandfather where we traveled or things like this so my grandfather was this guy, Rob, we would travel 50 miles for my grandfather to take 12 um, empty gallon jugs of of, of um, empty water gallon jugs for us to refill at the at the spring. We would drive to West Virginia. We wow. Over, and he's, you know, smoking a cigar, enjoying a cigar or, or, or whatever. So anything that from a from a childhood perspective. Um, I, I resonate with a cigar. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And it brings that connection back yeah. that you had back then. And I'm with you, man. Like there are certain days when I'm smoking a cigar and it makes me think of my dad and, yeah. you know, sitting out on the front porch. And my mother passed away in 2016 in February and my dad passed away in 2016 in March. Oh, so man. he only lived 41 days longer than she did. And he was just completely devastated by her loss. But us sitting out on the patio, they lived in an old craftsman style home with a big front porch. Wow. And we would sit out there and just smoke cigars and talk about the history. Yeah. And so now sometimes when I'm smoking a cigar, it just makes me go back to that point, and it's like, man, that was a great moment in my life. I'll never forget. Yeah. So, you know, not only does the cigar community bring you together, but, I mean, also looking back on your upbringing with your grandfather and your grandmother, y'all were a tight-knit family. Right. And so now that's gone, but you still have a tight-knit family in the cigar community sure and i mean isn't that a blessing man it, it truly is um man you make me feel some type of way um i don't want to make you cry no i mean <laughs> I, and, I, and, and i'm not opposed to that because man I, I i i love this um so um where i find myself now um i'm in the transportation trucking and 
moving material. And that's what my grandfather did. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's I mean, funny it's, because it's, I have that same connection with my dad. It's 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 so crazy that the subconscious and what you pick up as a child ends up being your life as an adult. So I have that. But I also have the cigars. And when you talk about um, my brothers and, and, and you met two of them here, um, the impact that the cigars and along with the relationships that, that, that I built um, around cigars um, really hits me different because it, it means so much. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about what cigars are what the culture continues to grow to be because Rob, yeah. Why you say, you know, that DC metropolitan area was a big cigar hub back in the day and in, in the in eighties the and, and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's obviously grown, right? You, you have a podcast that has followers that touch 50 States and it's just a beautiful thing. So when you talk about everything that's involved with that, outside of your personal relationships with it it just makes you makes you if it doesn't make you feel some type of way then man we're missing something oh 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know and, I, and i'm gonna i'm gonna assume something here on you because i was super super close with my dad the way you were with your granddad and i know for a fact that this is going to resonate with you when I get big news, who did I always want to call? Right, right. Well, I don't have that option anymore. Yeah. So you know who I share it with? My cigar community. Sure. I share it with the Light 'em Up crew. Dude, right. I, I, I have such good friends in the community now. I don't have the opportunity to pick up the phone and call my dad and say, hey, man, guess what's going on with Cigar Talk? But I got people that I'm super close with right. in the cigar community. And I'm going to tell you what, it has helped me through a lot of times having that cigar community, not having my folks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. 100%. I mean, I've, um, I'm, I'm kind of a loner and, and these guys will tell you, man, um, um, Jay has a certain type of energy with, with him. Um, but when I let you in, I, I, I do let you in. I am, I'm, um, you know, the, the, What's the word? The um the the layers, they're removed when when I let you in and uh man I'm 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 so transparent and and sometimes transparency isn't for everyone. It's a vulnerability it, too. It is because if you're not willing to be vulnerable, you're not going to be transparent. Right. And I believe in transparency a hundred percent. I don't want to be something that yeah. I'm not. And so whenever you know who I am, I want you to know who I am. <laughs> right. 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 And and, and I'm not. I'm not ashamed of it because if I've moved to a level where I've let you in in a way that I feel that I can be transparent, I, I'll give you an example. I happened to see an Instagram post last night um, in, 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 in terms of someone that I didn't um, really know their appearance. Been around them a whole lot of times. And I went to these, th these two dudes and I'm like, man, did you guys see that? Like, I was so blown away. I was like, oh, my gosh. And. In in normal settings, I wouldn't express myself that way. But I'm so man, my my, my brothers give me so much fuel um, to to allow me to be be myself. So yeah, and that's what the community is all about. Right, just being able because when you can be yourself is when you can relax. Right, you know right, what I mean. Right, right, if right. I if I have to put on airs. Man, that ain't my situation. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna remove myself. From I that. mean, I think Neo learned real quick last night when I showed up. <laughs> sure. I had the whole place going. What in the hell just happened in here? Yeah, but that's just who I am. That's what it should be. And if I can't be that person, then I'm not in the right environment. Why should you be anything else, Rob? Right. I mean, you know, if I can't be myself, I can't relax. And if I can't relax, then I need to find myself a new setting. But fortunately, in the cigar community we welcome all yeah and and that's what we push as in definition cigars and and so man for the for the followers the viewers the the guys that are loyal to um cigar talk cigar talk podcast is the when you see the what's your definition it's just not some 
thing. We we live by that. Man, like, what is your definition when you're smoking a cigar? I mean, keep that in mind. Right. Don't so you see the guy from across the room. Man, don't be like him. Be like you. Right. Smoke that cigar and 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 be like you. Don't don't Oh man, he he looks a certain way. Oh man, he's drinking this. Or Dude, and I he's I, acting and this. Let no, me, let me tell you this. When I first, I'd been smoking cigars probably for like three or four years before I actually took the time to go in a lounge and experience it mm-hmm. because I was intimidated. I mean, Rob Jones, I was intimidated. I walked in and there's a guy named Gary Hartley that I love now. But when I walked in, the dude's wearing like one of those derby hats. He looked like a certain way. He's smoking a digger. Okay. Big, fat, yes, long digger. Yes. And I'm like, that dude knows what the hell's going on. Right, right. I don't know shit. So I would go in, buy my cigars, and then I would come home and smoke them out right. in the backyard. And I was like, those dudes know what's going on. I don't know shit. Rob, we don't want that no more. Right. We don't want that. So, but what's so funny is that was a preconception in my mind. Right. I once I decided to sit down in the cigar lounge, I found out that Gary Hartley's like one of the coolest laid back dudes there I it is. know. But here's the other side of it though, Rob. You also have something to offer Gary Hartley. Right. Dude, we bounce each other back look, and forth. Look, you, you you have something to offer him and you were selling yourself short by getting caught up in what it looks like to be a guy that smokes cigar. Right. There's no such thing. Exactly. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. And you define. You define who you are. And like you said last like you said last night. I am comfortable in being in flip flops, pair of shorts, and I'm coming through. Right. I'm smoking. That's what it's all about. Let's talk cigars. And that's why I love the way you guys intended intently put together definition cigars right. it's for everyone it's for everyone in their own way in their own way and that's what's beautiful about it and you guys are making beautiful cigars man that's a that, that that's a blessing we have great partnerships uh with our factory um group we can i can't take the credit i, I have to shout those guys out so while we have ideas and and we've been smoking um a lot um cigars we before we done this, man, my, my guys over here looking at me, we, we, we met and just smoked cigars and critiqued and gave homage to, um, certain cigar brands. It was, it was easy when we started this to kind of move towards what we, what we like. So Rob, we started out with one cigar and that's six months and that's six months of going through Honduran leaves and Nicaraguan leaves, Dominican leaves and um Connecticut broad leaves and but what a great journey. I mean it, it was fun. It, it it was fun. Guys, it it was fun, right? I mean, you can't see him, but I mean, we we some some sticks we could only get halfway through and and some guys were like, "Man, fuck." <laughs> Yo, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. We're allowed man. we're allowed two F bombs a show. Some guys were like, "Man, forget this cigar. <laughs> I am done." Man, I, I um some of the cigars were such bombs um in terms of strength man like i, I um chad we're smoking a double a hero blend at the time and you know testing out and with this wrapper and this binder and he was like man i can't even do this well see and that's where i am now because when you tell me double a hero I get a little timid you got to trust me the though, phoenix man. though you got to trust i'm me. hearing that that Phoenix is like not an ass kicker. No. And Jay was telling me about the Phoenix last night, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with the Cameroon. <laughs> That's my so, safe zone. So today, yeah, when we go down to the shop, all right, you got to try the Phoenix. Uh, it, 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 it's it's it, it's because it's a going. San Andreas wrapper. It's a San Andreas it's wrapper. Double the Harrow filler, and I was like, whoa, double the Harrow binder. Binder. <laughs> yeah, which which kind of can be intimidating and uh, Honduran filler. So yeah, I was like, yeah, I haven't even eaten dinner yet. I'm not gonna go down that road. I don't want to get sick. No. Now, have you ever smoked an LFD NAS? I don't. I don't I okay, don't, I don't believe so. You would know because it looks like a Clint Eastwood cigar. It's one of those little. Shrewds. Oh, it's a cowboy cigar. Yeah, I love those. It's a little bitty, but let me tell you something. It's, it's appearance. I mean, damn. Its appearance is very deceiving 
because it is the most nicotine pack cigar you've ever it's had. Right. Dude, I had one. Bill, the old shop owner, was okay. like, yeah, I dare you to smoke one. And I was like, dude, I smoke 10 cigars a day. I got this. I got this. I smoked it, and I didn't get sick. But when I stood up, I was like, all right, it, I, I feel it. Was you pairing it with anything, Rob? No. Coffee. Coffee. Coffee, okay. So, but let me tell you this. I didn't smoke another cigar for six hours. Sheesh. Because that's how much nicotine it had. I mean, I was wow. like, I don't even want another cigar. And normally, when I lay a cigar down to let it go out, I'm already lighting up another one. So that cigar... So whenever I heard double the harrow on the Phoenix, I was kind of thinking and, that. And Rob, this is a this is this is a good segue to a question. So people get strength confused with high nicotine content, right? And there's so, two so there's talk, two different. Talk about that a little bit, okay, for for, for everyone that's going to see this. So whenever you think, sh- I see nicotine strength and flavor strength. Mm-hmm. They're two completely different because I can smoke a medium cigar that's strong on flavors. Right. I can get all that pepper. I can get all that leather, but and it's blasting you. Right. And I can I I can dig that. Yes. But I don't need a nicotine bomb. And then they'll get me wrong though. There's some nicotine bombs that like Libiju 1922. Mm-hmm. That is not a weak cigar. Right. right That's right, got right. some nicotine to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's very balanced sure. with the flavor and the amount of nicotine you get. And I'm cool with that. Right. I'm not going to smoke those one after the other, though. <laughs> yeah. You I see get what it. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference. That's I'm the difference that people don't understand. I'm going to go back to a medium cigar because I w- I'd like to keep the flavor profile almost like a roller coaster. Right, right. Up and down. Yep. Some complexity. And I, I, I'm to the point now in my cigar smoking, and I've only been smoking cigars for about 12 years. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I didn't think that the nicotine bombs and the spice bombs were the great cigars. Right. Cause right, you know, right. when you get to those, you're like, holy shit, this is what a cigar should be. Right. And then. Two years later, you're like, well, let me dive back into these. And you can't taste shit. Right. I ruined my palate for two years because that's all I smoked. But now I love a good Connecticut. Sure. I love a good medium Habano. Right, 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 right. I love a medium plus San Andreas. Yes, yes, yes. So when you get to the point where you can enjoy all the cigars, dude, that's when cigar life that, gets good. That is. And I think it's healthy. For, for, for anyone out there, you know, your favorite cigar, maybe a Maduro or, or what have you, it is it is healthy for your palate to dance around. Because once those nerve endings go in your palate, they're not, they don't recover. They don't come back. Right. They're gone. So when you, you, you're burning yourself out on, on some of those spice bombs that's that's in the industry, and, and I'm not going to say no names, um, you don't you don't come back from that. So. Man, just make sure that you, that you have a a, a good balance uh, of what you're smoking, and that's what we try to offer. Definition cigars. That's that's what that's what we do. We're, we're not big spice bomb guys. We're flavor guys first. Even in our, in, 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 in the Maduros that you smoke, um, we we flavor first. Um, we obviously love some strength um, because we 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 you smoke a lot. We're living in, in in that Maduro side of right. uh, of things, um, but at the same time, we we want we want to have flavor. We don't want to ruin palates, right? We, you know, at at the same time, um, we we want to be able to talk and smoke and 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 with like the I folks. know guys that smoke the LFD Double Lajero stick after stick after stick, and I'm like chain smoking hey, that. That's cool for you if that's what you enjoy, Man. but I want to enjoy the complexity. Of a wide range of cigars versus just pounding and pounding in my palate. You know what I mean? That's that's just right. That's I mean that's that's what you're supposed to do, Rob. That's- well, and, and and that's what I think. But I also always go back to whatever floats your boat. If that's if if you like a good pounding, you're like a two dollar hooker. Then hey, knock yourself out. So so the resp- and and facts. Okay. Right. Like if that's your thing. But the responsible thing as a cigar company is to 
offer you the ability to. Well, yeah, because you're looking at it at a different point of view. Sure. I want to offer people the plethora of options to where, and plethora is my favorite big word, by the way. Hold on. Plethora. See now, there? Doesn't that sound great coming off your tongue? It does. Plethora. Yeah. But if you offer a wide plethora of cigar profiles, you're offering something that anybody that has a niche will like. Right. But at the same time, you're giving guys an opportunity to try several different cigars. There it is. And that's, that's what I hook. love. That's, that's what hook. I love. That's the hook. That's now, the hook. There's some guys out there that when they find your San Andreas, that's the cigar they're going to go to. For me, I like to dance around. I like to try this and that and this. And that's what I enjoy as a cigar smoker. And I know there's a lot of guys that like a one hit wonder. Right. But I like the dance. You said it, though. You, you, you talked about the journey with cigars. So our hope is that if you like a definition cigar, that as opposed to the one you like, that you may try another. Right. And that you may try another. And, and it becomes because. I honestly have never, even being a pup and smoking cigars, have su subscribed to the fact of smoking the same cigar. If I if I happen to decide to smoke five cigars in a day, I don't want to smoke the same cigar five times. No, I want even even when I when I understood and and Rob starting here and then getting here, but if I started here, what where was the rest of my day going? You know. All that cigar stuff that you that you. Grab. I'm a mood smoker. So am I. And and my mood is when I wake up, I usually smoke my first cigar at seven a.m. Okay. And I have coffee with that cigar, and I'm in a certain mood. Sure. So I don't want a double lajero at seven a.m. Right, 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 right. I'm gonna smoke a light medium to a medium between seven and noon. And then once I get to noon, I've had three or four cigars, yep. and now I'm now ready to go from the up. medium to a medium plus. Yep. And now by the time the evening gets here, I might smoke a full-blown ass-kicker cigar, right? or I might revert back to something medium yep. or less. Depending on how, how long you're going to smoke right. for the day, though. And, and what I'm drinking. And what you're drinking. If I'm having an afternoon cup of coffee at 6 p.m., I'm going to have a medium to medium plus. Right. If I'm going to pour myself a bourbon, I might go for a medium plus to a full blown. Sure. Totally get and and that's what that's our thought process. Right. That, that's, so um there's an obligation in having so many blends, right? And and keeping so many um different sizes, wrappers and types of cigars. But we can't call ourselves definition cigars without giving you the full experience. And if you don't offer options, how can I be the definition cigars? Because exactly. if you're just giving me one option, that definition may not fit me. Hey, Rob, if I'm just giving you Maduro's, then I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what my definition is. Right. And now you jump on, right. jump on the train. Right. I can't say, I can't ask you what's your definition. Because I haven't given you a Connecticut. Well, you're I not giving, giving me a Habano. I haven't given you a Maduro. I haven't given you multiple wrappers with with this type of uh, um, binder filler. I mean, I let mean, me I'm let, me, nerdy, let, me, let me tell you something I'd like to see you guys do. Uh oh. And I'm going to give you a project that I would like to see come to fruition over the next two years. Bam, 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 bam. Because I know bam. it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Okay. But I would love to see you Don't do. Don't say Dominican tobacco. No. Okay. What I'd like to see is a Nicaraguan Maduro uh -huh. barber pulled with a Mexican San Andreas box press. Did it. Didn't like it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, didn't, you did it and you didn't <laughs> like it. That doesn't mean you can't do it again and make it better. Facts. Because <laughs> there's always room for improvement. A Dominican box press. No, I didn't say pole. Dominican. I mean, uh, a Nicaraguan box press barber, barber pole. With the San Andreas. It San can't be a barber pole. It's got to be San Andreas and what? And a Nicaraguan Maduro. Wow. That's wow. You see what I'm saying? Two dark wrappers, but barber pole, box press torpedo. Boom. 
That I mean, is, make it beautiful. Every cigar you guys make has been beautiful. That is lightning in a bottle, bottle. <laughs> dude. Y'all and make, Rob, if I produce this, then what? Let's smoke it. <laughs> smoke it, brother. Let's all smoke it. Rob, I'm gonna try it. Hey, I'm just throwing something out there. A I've got the Nicaraguan San I'm like, Andreas. What type? San Andreas and what? What else type of rubber? A Nicaraguan Maduro. You want a with Nicaraguan a, Maduro? Yes, something that's going to be bold, but then throw in that Mexican San Andreas so you get that spice on top of the Maduro, which is going to be bold but also sweet. What about Ecuadorian Maduro? Oh, I love Ecuadorian tobacco. I think it, it produces a certain spice that nobody else can make. So, but also though, that's why I think you should go with a Nicaraguan Maduro because Nicaraguan Maduros are going to be more of your like bold but sweet, maybe a little chocolatey with a San Andreas spice. Sure. And then what you do in the middle, the binder and the filler, I don't give a shit. It's got to be Nicaraguan. You, you, you though, figure right? that out. You figure okay. that out. But that sounds like a fun task. I think that would be something that would be special because I don't know of any cigar that's already like that, but I think it could be beautifully made. It, it, it could be. And the one thing that it's going to do, it's, it's going to, it's going to change colors. Right. Just, just a little bit. It's it, not it, no, be, no, no, no. As the age, not, not a whole lot to your point, not a whole lot, but there's going to be some, there's going to be some shades. It's going to be beautiful. As we call it, tiger stripes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not a cigar maker. I'm not a cigar it's a great blender. Idea. I just think it would be a magnificent when you take that cocoa, bittersweet mm. cocoa flavor and add it with a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. You're like, wow. Here's the beautiful thing about this conversation is that um, we're blessed enough to have the ability to try shit. Hey, that. <laughs> hey, and you presented me with a pre-release i would hey, like one of those fucking cigar <laughs> yes sir yes sir i can't you know what this has got me torn do i want to cut it and smoke it or do i want to save it and i'm not a saver i'm not a saver cut it i so here's what i'm going to do for you i'm uh, it, there's, there's levels to this shit you cut it now and then you smoke it today and you talk about it and then while we you know um, let them season, you know, more and more. I, I think they'll get better, but that Sumatra wrapper um, is is different. Chad and I smoked one on the way from um, Dallas to San and to um, um, Abilene. Excuse me, I was going to say San Andreas. We drive that damn long shit um, to Abilene, and we was past Ranger before the damn thing was ready to go out. It's it's a, it, it it's a super slow burner. I love that. I love a slow burner because I'm a naturally fast smoker. So a cigar that is a real slow burner right. lets me enjoy a cigar for an Man. hour, hour and a half to where most cigars. That oh, most, you ain't got nothing in your cup, though, dog. I, I got, I, don't, don't sell me short. Okay. Hey, hey, Shit. hey, you're trying to sell me short. I've refilled three times since we started this conversation. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to be that guy. Hey, drinking up shit. When you come to my place, well, be that get, guy. May I get another pour it in, Rob? Whichever one you want. Rob, your shirt says host for a reason. Hey, how about the double oak? Have you had the double oak yet? One or two times. All right, well, a third time. Boom. Where's Brian? He is in Colleen, Texas, visiting family. Okay, he didn't make it back. No, I called. Here's the funny thing. I called him this morning at nine o'clock and I was like, hey, man, what time are you going to be here? And he's like, dude, I just got up. <laughs> and I was like, at nine o'clock? I was like, dude, I've been up since seven. Right. And you and went, you went, what, what we like to call hard in the paint? Yes, I did. And I, because that's how I normally go. Okay. It, you know, I've always, let me tell you something. My Tell them about last night, the energy last Ooh, night. So, so last we, we night all we all good. get there, and, and and there's there's there's. And let me just preface this with okay. Neo has got bourbon. Neo, Neo has got scotch. 
Neil's got some other liquor. I don't know. Got and some. then y'all show up and Chad's got some rye. And I'm, yeah. I'm very particular on my rye right. because I don't like sweet rye. What kind of rye did you bring, Chad? It was, uh, whistle, pig. whistle pig, piggyback, six year age. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. And so I'm real hesitant. Have you had the angel's chair? Angel's chair. Or no. angel, what's it called? Angel's envy. Envy. The the rye, I love that shit. I see. And I don't. I'm a dry rye guy. That is that, too sweet for me. It, for me, we gotta do it again. For me, Rob, the, we gotta do it again. Oh, I, I, I'm always up for a redo. Rob, we gotta do it again. You remember? You remember what we gonna stop to by say? Pinkies on the way over over I, there? Uh, what do they say? Shout out to Pinkies, Chad. Yeah. I want a do over. <laughs> 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 I'm always up for a do over, but let me tell you what that piggyback. Is that yeah. what it's called? Piggyback? It's yes. piggyback. It's 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 Dude, a variation of the other. That of the, rye of the pig. was fantastic. It, and it's not the standard whistle hey, pig. Let me, this is, let me show this to everybody. This is good that, stuff. That that's not the standard. So whistle pig has that. It's it's like it's like Padron and and the and, and the Padron six thousand, seven thousand. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's on that end. Well, let me tell you one thing. I respect any guy. That shows up with a bottle to the studio, man. You, you know what you, I mean? You fucking with? Damn, that's my fifth that's one. The, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna have to bleep them out. So that, anyway, that's how we roll no, the but you know, I all if you come to the studio, you see we are not fucking around, right? Oh, there's did seven. you see we got the bam the bamboo? I see that. So so Rob, here, here's the thing, um, cigar etiquette. I don't believe is standard to a shop. It's in you. It's how you move. It's how you approach the culture. It's how you look at what cigars and, and wherever you go. So in relation to us, when we come anywhere, whether it's a B, BYOB, um, um, or if you lounge, come to the cigar talk studio, or, or you, I mean, you we, show up like it's, it's, it's etiquette. Like, We'll bring you cigar. That's how we we'll feel. We'll share our libations with you. That's how we'll, we feel. We'll do X, Y, and Z. There, there is an approach that we come with. That's the definition way. Let me, that, let that's me, the way. Let me tell you what, Larry. You met Larry last night. Big, tall, six foot seven, black La dude. Larry, Larry, man, that was about put about to put us to sleep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know what me and Larry have established is Larry, super dope guy. When we show up. All of our liquor is for whoever's back there. That's us. And you know what we That's call us. that? We belong to the first chapter of the We Ain't Fucking Around Club. How many members are our <laughs> Right now there's five, but you're more than welcome to join. Man, you, you, got, you got five others. <laughs> now you got five. We now we got ten. We, we got ten. Because we ain't. You know we, what I mean? We, we, yeah. we, we, when, we, when I buy a bottle of bourbon, this is not for me. Yeah, it's, this it's is perfect. whoever wants to hang out and smoke cigars. Yeah, Neil said it said it earlier, and I don't know if it's on camera, off camera, but Neil was like, "Man, you know, fucking around with your mind, you you know, man, hey, man, strap them up, right?" We, I mean, there there there's man. So again, we we go about to talking about man the stuff with my grandfather and and, and your dad and and um it translates to moments for me, um. Life is short, brother. I live every day like it's my last. Because I life do. is short. I always do. How old was your granddad when he passed? My granddad was 65, 66 years old. My dad was 66. And you know what that taught me more than anything? Life's short. Man. Life's short. Do not let ah, life 66. pass you by without enjoying it. 66. So, man, I'm 41. That's saying I got 15 summers Dude, left. Dude, I'm 52. Listen, you got 14 summers left. Wow. Right. I mean, that's the saying, so... Every day, I want to enjoy it. If I don't enjoy a day, I missed something. So, man, I, 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 I'll share the story. On the way over here, um, me and Chad, and he's like, man, shit, you, want, you sure you want to smoke in, in the car? So, in the car, that, excuse me, in the car that we drive, he's like, man, you sure you want to I'm like, dude, you nailed it. You nailed it because that's my biggest thing. Man, we got if, three hours, dog. If you, if you are in a car... And you're not smoking? <laughs> I I'm like, don't. No, we got that. we got three hours. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had great conversations. We, we we had a moment in the car. Like, man, you know, I mean, I don't want to not enjoy today. I mean, 
every day is a blessing. Enjoy Man. it, brother. Man, Enjoy it, especially from from where I come from and and, and my upbringing and and how we come from to to be able to to man sit here with you man like when when this releases man people in my neighborhood are gonna be like oh shit and you like, know what i've already decided this is dope this has been so good getting to know you guys on the show that this isn't even gonna be a regular show this is gonna be a special definition cigar release what can we do to make it even more special you know i don't want to offend you Okay. But I ain't had a blowjob in about two weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Rob. I'm, I'm, um, wow, this is a special episode. <laughs> hey, Rob. Man, no disrespect to your wife. But if you She's happen, out of town. <laughs> you happen to find yourself in Dallas, Texas. Uh, my player partner, Chad, make sure we get you straight. <laughs> no, man. But yeah, honestly, ser- honestly on, on a serious level, uh, you know, I what I would I talked to one of my Patreons earlier, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do three separate interviews with these guys, mm-hmm. and we'll release like one one week, wait Part two one. weeks, wait, yeah, do another sure, one, sure. wait two weeks, do another one. So we, I didn't probably talk too fucking long. Yeah, uh, you're way bad. over these guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, no, no, don't be sorry. So, but what I've decided is, let's just release this as a special edition definition cigar cigar talk issue let's get the people something though what do you want to do man that's what we're talking about that's that's for, for that that's man you know your patreons um the light em up crew the light em up crew light em up crew what's your definition so you know what let's do this let's what can do we this do? first of all what, what first of all people? we're gonna release this show first to just the light em up crew, light and up. then we'll wait a week and release it to everybody else. All right, let's. What can we do for the light em up crew? What do you want to do? You tell Man, me, brother. I, I want to. Well, we got a lot of light em up crew members, so let's okay. not go crazy. <laughs> um, maybe for the producers. Our producers are a special certain breed okay. of the light em up crew. We have board meetings with these guys because they help us so much in shaping where Cigar Talk's going. Okay. I have board meetings with these guys at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, where we do a video chat. And those guys, man, they are instrumental to the success of Cigar Talk. So so what do you want to do for those guys? We're getting ready to release um, a new Definition Cigars t-shirt. It's the, it, we call it the seal. It's, the seal? It is, it, is, it is the armor. It is the... Um, you know, it is the um, definition cigars thing. We'll be wearing it this summer. Um, how about we do that for those guys for cost? Awesome, man. Awesome. You know what? I've got a special website that's only accessible to the Light 'em Up crew, and we'll put those on there. And we'll we'll, we'll send them to you, and then you you distribute them how 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 it um how it uh how to make sense, and and we'll talk about that. But we'll we'll do it for the same cost. Did it cost to produce the T-shirt? You will do for cost for you guys to them. To them. Awesome, that's, that's man. We'll do. Awesome, we'll dude. Do. I appreciate that. They appreciate it because, dude, I got a special group of guys. Right. And, I mean, if you don't know how many times, like, I'll be, like, calling them up on my Discord server be like, hey, Z, what do you know about this? What do you think about this? Right. Or, hey, Groot, what do you think about this? Or, you know, I mean, these guys are just instrumental. I got a guy named Jax Rocks. I, I talked to that guy. He he has so much insight for me, and it's like these guys are just such an important part of Cigar Talk that it's like, it's like I've got a panel of people that can give me great information. And Rob, th- th- that's dope. So this is intentional, us being here. Oh yeah. Um, so, um, you know, you get you get asked from all, all types of uh, talking bobbleheads to to be on stuff, right? Um, but what you do, you and I had a one on one conversation. Um, I see the energy behind what you do. Um, and it's it's organic, I believe. And, well, you know what's funny like is I don't consider myself to be a huge energy guy. 
I just consider you myself are. to be a laid back, no, you transparent are. guy. You are. Although Neo thought I was kind of. Rob, it's, 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 Rob, it's, it's funny that you say that because um, your energy is is high. Um, in a room, you you are what we call a, a person that gives. You don't you're not looking to receive anybody else's energy there. And some people need that to be able to be comfortable in a room. Some people. So what I mean is a person comes into the room, not really comfortable. They need to feel Chad, come over and talk to him, make him feel comfortable, Neo and yourself. And then they become comfortable. They need energy. Okay. To, well, that part, you're right. I don't need. You do not need energy. You, <laughs> right. you, you I have my you, own. You have your own. <laughs> and that's important. Especially in 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 a cigar in a lounge, a hey, Rob. That is so important that a person comes with their own energy, especially when they have a platform that they come with. So you, you don't come in there with this bullshit um, pretentiousness. That hey, I'm cigar talk, Rob. Come talk to me, dude. I don't even tell people that I have a podcast. I'm, I'm just when saying, go, but it, I, but I, it's the I, facts though. When I go to the lounge. Like there are certain guys at the lounge, they don't even know I but have. But Rob, a show. it's the facts. It's it the is facts. facts. You're being humble right now. You're being. It, it is the fucking facts. Yeah, it, it is. is. It, it it's is. just the facts. But I don't look at myself as up here. Nor should you. It's I not look about at myself that. as being part of the group. That as you as do we. But right. You, but we are handed the baton so if we're doing a four by 100 re, uh, meter relay race that ain't me <laughs> Rob. in the terms of cigars it hey, is hey, when you're smoking hey, 10 cigars a fucking something. day let me tell you something when i was in high school i ran the 400 meters you ran the long lap who who does that let me tell you something you know what i was pissed me off though about that the last 200 no oh, okay i was the only white guy on the fucking team and I wasn't going to the meets. I was just at practice. <laughs> uh, so, you know what I'm saying. So if somebody pulled a hamstring, you're like, man, let's plug in Rob. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I'm running a 50. Rob the rabbit. I'm running a 51, okay? Right. I get it. I get it. Everybody else on the team's black. They're running 48s, mm-hmm. 49s. Mm-hmm. Why did I got to run? <laughs> I was on the football team. I don't even want to run. Rob, why do they have the backup tight end? You're in there to fucking block. <laughs> right. Dude, You're not in there to catch passes. But I didn't want to run the 400. I wanted to run the 100. You know what I mean? Was you fast enough? No. <laughs> well, shit. Your wants I, and desires came <laughs> sometimes don't align, dog. Hey, let me tell you something. The coach said. Hey man, I know you ain't been coming to practice for about three weeks. <laughs> like man, I like I'm a realist about this shit. <laughs> hey, right? this sometimes shit just don't add up. Right. So so Debbie over here is telling us we're running over time. We are running over time, man. Right. What, what, what's the last question? What, hold on, hold so on. So my last question for you is: Damn, we man, we hey Rob, I don't even know what time. You know, it's is. 13 minutes to the fucking show. Holy crap. Rob, you got to get down to the least. Rob, man, this is what it's about, though. We're we going to get down there. Okay. Hey, Neil, you mind reaching out to Jay? Just just let him know that we're running a little bit over. Tell him, tell him, Sikar Talks captured you guys. Tell him, Rob's got six butt naked honeys over here <laughs> and a lot of bourbon. What's, what, 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 so, what's the question so of the hour? Let me ask you this. Going into 2021, yeah. you're finally out of the pandemic stage. Right. You guys are now getting out and being face to face with people. Right, right. With your background and your experience, what's that what's that mean to you? I mean, getting able to see the people cutting light cigars with the people who support your brand, what's that mean to you, man? Man, Rob, I mean, I'm I ain't gonna get emotion in front of these two dudes right here. But, hey, y'all uh, get out. No, man, <laughs> it, it is uh oh man, it's it's everything. Um man, I I had a guy this morning um send send a uh, a DM that he was smoking one of our cigars for the first time and 45 minutes later he was like, "Man, you got a customer for life." Um oh. and I understand that. I do. Because I get emails all the time with guys to tell me that they just found cigar talk 
and they've just started going back and listening to all our other episodes. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, what a humbling thing. It's like, you know what? I'm just doing what I enjoy. Thank you. I mean, that's what it is. That's it. And if I can bring some knowledge to somebody, if I can in if I can bring a laugh to someone, if I can bring a new bourbon or a new cigar to someone, that brings joy to me. Man. And so when you have a line of your own cigars and someone guy sends Come you a on, message and say, you, Hey, right? I found your cigars. Talk to me. And they're blowing me away. Man. I've got you've got a customer for life. Yeah, twenty twenty one is 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 about that. We we've seen exponential growth. Um in the start of twenty 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 one we so we 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 released three cigars, um the nine nineteen, the Phoenix and the Walking Stick, um in the first three months. And it was intentional. We held we held cigars at the at the end of twenty twenty, um, to launch twenty twenty one in in a specific way. But Growth is always there. You you, you want to continue to grow because we want to continue to see what. Now Neo told me you're the numbers it. guy. I don't know exactly what that means, but I get an idea of that's the logistics. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare for growth? How yeah. do you prepare to? Because let me let me put this put this to you. LFD used to be one of the premier top line cigars. I don't consider them to be that anymore. Right. Alec Bradley was a premier deliverer of great cigars. Two of these great companies had a logistical nightmare hit right. when they had cigars named number one with Cigar Aficionado. They were not, and I don't know if you can be ready whenever Cigar Aficionado names you as number one. Right. But let's take that back. Cigar Aficionado is not naming you guys number one. I hope that someday they look at you guys and get you in the top 25. But let's look at that scenario. Rob, this is, a, this is an awesome segue, by the way. When you hit growth, yeah, you can't stay where you are right now because it's going to make you suffer quality-wise. Yeah. How do you stay on top of the quality with the exponential growth? Because right. if you don't do your background homework, right. what's going to happen? And if I'm going to be on... Suffer. I'm on your bandwagon. Right. I'm on your bandwagon. Right. So what I want to make sure is when you guys exponentially grow, that you are prepared logistically to make the segue into going into quality and not losing the quality because you're growing too fast. That is 100 man. Rob, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, honestly, I'm glad that you asked that question because it's been a conversation over the past. Um, 12 I'm glad days. to know that's a conversation that going a, on that has been a conversation because if you're not time. having that conversation, you're not going to be ready. Right. So, um, are you familiar with an artist by the name of Wale? I am not. So, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, I do know who Jerry Seinfeld is. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld um, uh, narrated an album by a, a hip hop artist by the name of Wale. No way. Um, back about three or four years ago, and one of the um, narration moments inside of the album, Jerry Sam Jerry Seinfeld talks about growth, but it was growth in terms of a of a relationship. Mm -hmm with a man and a woman, but in terms of our relationship with cigars and definition, it, it was applicable. So Jerry Seinfeld said in a nutshell that you're never ready for growth. Growth is growth. Growth is you growing. You cannot prepare for growth. You cannot um, imagine what that growth is going to look like. It's called growth for a reason. The definition of growth is growing, expanding, being different than how you were before. Um, so our preparation in growing is around making sure that we have a solid infrastructure to meet demand. Now, today, as I sit right here, are we prepared? No. Um, I, I, I spoke with you, and I'm, I'm so transparent to my heart um, that... 
we have had to let customers know. And it's all about communication as well. Absolutely. Where we at? Yeah. Where we at? There, there, there are some prominent cigar companies that I am well aware of that do not have any problem telling the customer, you order it. So at the show, for instance, in 2019, I was out there, you know, doing my homework. There was there was prominent cigar companies that were saying that in 2019 in July, you're making this order. You won't get it until October. Right. There, that, that, that's, that's just that's, the way it that's is. That's just the way it is. How definition doesn't strike out on that one shot that we get for the lounge to put cigars there is that we there's a fin- financial obligation to our customers to ensure efficiency and effectiveness and um, on-time service um, that we're looking to do and will do and are prepared to execute. Um, there, there's also um, our distribution and su- supply chain as far as our cigars. So all of our cigar bands are made in Dallas, Texas. Nice. This, this is not something that's done at, at, at the factory. We have a super great relationship with a company out of Boston, Massachusetts, that um, produces these bands. But they're all... Um, they're all made for our cigars in Dallas once they get to us. Um, so there's a there's a network there, um, and we're we're making that stronger. Um, we are um, investing in our um, humidification system so that we have a, a platform that is wider to be able to have ready finished product for shipping. Um, for our customers to get there sooner and faster so that we don't have to say, hey, there's a 72-hour minimum or there's a you know 96-hour minimum, whatever it is. We are doing things today to improve what you have grown to know from Definition Cigars, uh, Rob. So those are the things that we're already talking about because it, it, it's, a real, it's, it's a real live thing here. And we're investing the dollars that you spend on our cigars, we're investing back into the company. We're not out here, you know, buying cars or looking flashy or Thank you. doing Thank all you. that. Let me tell we you are something. investing it back in the Let company. Let me tell you something. You know what? I, I think that is such an important part of any business, and that's how we do it at Cigar Talk. Like, if you think I'm taking money to do right. this, right? I'm putting all the money back in the show, and I don't know how everyone else does it. And I don't care. I know that if I want to continue to grow and continue to be here and keep doing things that nobody else is doing, I got to keep pouring whatever does come in right right back into the garden. Yep. Keep it growing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so that makes me very happy to know that you guys are looking at that and saying, this is what we got to do. Sure. Because if we want to, like, enjoy the uh prosperous part that we've been through now then you're already screwed right so that tells me that you're looking long term and if you're not looking long term even though i love what you make now sure i can't you be can't. part of what you're doing if you're not looking long term right. what did i tell you last night our, our i don't company. remember <laughs> <laughs> and that's good yeah. so, i'm gonna be transparent with you <laughs> our foundation our company statement our company motto and what keeps us grounded as a five um, and keeps us, us grounded with our customers is that we provide a great cigar at an affordable price for the people. Right. So before we start taking ownership draws out of the company, if we're not able to satisfy great cigar, affordable price for the people, we can't do anything else. Right. We can't. It that, won't that's last. not who we are. It won't last. It won't either. last because that that that's that is the foundation of why we are having the ability to talk to you right now. Is because that was what we even, birthed this company. Even from. when I talked to you a couple of months ago, I heard that message. And if I didn't hear that message, you wouldn't be here right now. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because if if you're not looking long term, then you're just a here today, gone tomorrow right, type right, company. Right, and yeah. there's a ton of those out there. There are. They're trying to get a cash grab and then they're out. Then they're out. But that's not what you guys are looking for. 
Rob, you, you I guys think they're, they're, they're trying to they're here. trying to get me and you off the off the off the microphone. Man, I keep hearing people tell us, "Hey, you're running over, you're running over." Dead hey guys, man, sorry. thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you so much for the mentality that you guys are bringing to the cigar industry. We appreciate that in the community. And we want to thank you for offering the Definition Cigar T-shirts to our yep. Patreons at cost. And we would just say thank you so much for being here in Abilene, Texas. We want to thank you for being part of the Leaf community. Because for me and Bryant, the Leaf is our home shop. Right. And that's where we want our time and efforts to be spent and we love venturing out to other shops but just the fact that you guys are coming here and doing a cut and light means a lot to us so thank you for that and thank you for coming and being on the show we appreciate it what's your definition hey guys we got a special guest with us today we have neo from definition cigars how you doing brother i'm great man it's, it's, it feels good to actually be here with you it nice does. man we talked for shoot man it's months now exactly and, uh, you know, I've been a big fan of your sm- cigars. Actually, that maroon band, which one's that called? This is called the Conception. I, that's, I think that's my favorite one so far. This is honestly my go to in our brand. This is one I probably smoke the most yeah. out of all of our cigars. Well, it's funny because I was talking to one of our uh, Light 'em Up crew members earlier this morning. Mm-hmm. His name's Batch. And I was asking him if he had smoked your cigars, and he was like, Yeah, I smoked that one mm-hmm. and a couple of other ones. But that was his favorite as well. Yeah. So the maroon band, that's what I call it, but it's actually <laughs> called the Inception. No, Conception. Conception. Yeah. Gotcha. Because of the uh, the Condega wrapper from Nicaragua is from the Concepcion area of uh, oh. Nicaragua near, near the volcanoes. Nice. So that's why it's it's a it's, it's a different type of Maduro. I and, really and I love that wrapper, man. That yeah, wrapper is nice. Beautiful light. Can you hold it up and let everybody see sure, it? Yeah. And slide it up towards the camera. There you go. Gotcha. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice looking stick. It is, man. So your line is actually pretty large line now. It's grown a lot. It uh, has grown. It's grown a lot. We have a lot more faces than when we started two years ago. And a lot of that is really just the growth we had in twenty twenty. You know, we really owe a lot to um people like you. Anyone that's bought our cigars over the last year for us to survive what 2020 was for everybody. Yeah, you know, the pandemic amazing. could have put you under. It really but could But it have. was really a growing stage for you guys. An, an immense growing stage for us. It, it was. It's really been, you know, a lot of learning, a lot of trial and error, and a lot of just, you know, us standing together as a crew. And really trying to make this thing grow and not and let it be about the brand and not about us. That's just, that's, that's you know, when P, I had friends that, like, a year after we were in business, had no idea I was behind the brand at oh, all. Oh, really? Yeah, and and I and I guess for me, I'm I'm a very low key dude anyway, and most of my guys are like we if we from the beginning we were like we don't want it to be about us. Well, you know, I hung out with three of you guys last night, yeah. and all three of you are pretty laid back, yeah. low key. You know, not like Bryant. Yeah, because that headphone's not hooked up. No, you're good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for interrupting. You're good. No, it, it's recording on that board over there, dear. I marry the two up later. She's new. My regular camera guy, it's Easter weekend. He's out of town with his girlfriend, Yeah, which is also my son. So anyway, Deborah interrupted the show. We'll keep going. Uh, but anyway, so... Tell me a little bit about your history before Definition Cigars, even before cigars. Oh. Like, like, where'd you grow up? Okay, I'm uh, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Okay, uh, from cool. The, from the Oak Cliff area. Um, I lived there until I was 18. Then I moved. I gra- uh, went to college at Prairie View A&M University. Actually, my degree is in mechanical engineering. Oh, wow. And my first job out of college was at a cement plant in uh, Theodore, Alabama, outside of Mobile. So I lived there. Like, <laughs> I honestly moved there. Right before Hurricane Katrina hit. Oh, wow. So my mom was freaked out for a couple of days because she didn't, she couldn't get in touch with me. But when she got in touch with me, I was like, Mom, I'm fine. I just lost power, but I'm good. I actually lost power for a day throughout that whole entire disaster. And I moved to Houston in 2008. And then I've been back home in Dallas in the uh, Lancaster area since uh, 2011. Now, what did you do while you were in the Houston area? I was a uh, sales engineer for a pipe company. Okay. And we, uh, we made pipe for oil drilling, but we also made pipe for uh, signposts. 
whether it was the round pipe or a square perforated pipe for like safety signs, for stop signs, for highway signs. And so I dealt with the Department of Transportation in many states and also with, um, uh, you know, different uh, contractors as well, too. It's crazy when you actually think about how many things require signs. Yes. My best friend's a sign maker in Lubbock, Texas. Mm-hmm. He works at, he works for Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how many signs can there be? Dude, coronavirus, gun cha- or gun law changes, yeah. just names of rooms. It's like, dude, he's making signs all day, every day. Honestly, I, at that time, I learned that no other state has more signage per road mile than the state of Texas. Really? Like people from Cal- like people from other big states would come to Texas and learn about how we do our signage, the reflectivity of signs. So people, because you have more older drivers on the road, so you want to be sure they could see signs at night once their lights hit the sign. So I, I learned about the traffic industry. I was like, I, it was one of those things where I learned that. I learned a lot, a different pocket of a different industry. And now I've been selling kitchen cabinets for 10 years, you know. And, and with the signs, though, it's like when you're just driving down the road, you don't even think about it. No. But there's a lot of science that goes behind just the signs. Yes. That's yes. crazy, it man. Is. It is. It, I mean, and for us, we also sold the breakaway systems. So if a car hit a signpost, instead of it like wrapping itself around a, a, a you know a Schedule eighty uh, signpost, it would break away from the base. So that way, it was it was a safety measure. And so I, I sold that here in Texas, Louisiana, in Michigan, and other states as well too. So you know it, it was it was a definite learning experience. And then I went from engineering to sales and engineering to straight sales now as a, a sales rep for a, a cabinet manufacturer. So you sell what kind of cabinets now? Uh, 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 kitchen cabinets, bathroom cabinets. Um, Mainly special order and also in stock cabinets at Home Depot. Is so, that mainly for like home use? Home use, uh, commercial use. I mean, okay. I've, I've sold to. I'm actually working on a uh, an apartment project right now in Houston at a, one of my stores in Arlington. So, yeah, it's it's really for people that uh, we even do office cabinets as well. Too. So, so you're a regular working dude just like us. Yes, of course. I mean, we all enjoy the cigar community. Yeah, but I mean, we're all working guys. Yeah. I and, mean, so, and that's with all your partners too. Yeah, we're all, we're all working guys, and we we all have you know different um, different industries that we work in. You know, from education to logistics to sales to IT, and so we all bring something different to the table. And I tell people all the time, I I would not have done this without these four guys at all. Like we all bring something unique to the table to where we've thrived. The last now, how did years. you guys get together in the beginning? It, it really was uh, an idea uh, from my good friend, Jamal, who worked part time at a cigar lounge. And he, he used that time to learn about the industry, talk to reps, talk to, you know, uh, shop owners as well, uh, brand owners as well. And so, you know, he was like, man, we can he and my, uh, my boy, a uh, German were like, we, we can do this. We just need we, we, we need to take the steps in order to do it. But we, we why not us? Why not us? coming up with a cigar brand and they reached out to me because they were like neo like we want you to be on the team because you travel you smoke all types of cigars so i was known for posting uh, my cigars on instagram all the time and i I just had i would have big name brands but i love boutiques and they were like you have a palette like you have a palette that would really help us kind of grow as far as what kind of cigars to bring to the table and i was like at the time in my life i was like i was able to invest in something like this and i was like i'd love to do it yeah, and then we we brought on uh, Jamon because Jamon is 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 a numbers guy. He's a great numbers guy, and, and we needed somebody on our team for that aspect. And my boy Chad, you know, Chad's one of those guys that everybody that he's a, he people kind of gravitate towards him. He's a people person. Yeah, he is. He he's a teacher too. So oh, you know, okay, cool. he's a teacher as well. So like he, he's a, he's a very personable guy. So you have all these different backgrounds coming together. Yes, yes. and it's kind of cool because you can like like you also are a salesperson. Yeah. So you have a lot of experience in sales. Mm-hmm. You got other people who are logistics. You have other people who are face to face. I mm-hmm. mean, all these backgrounds bringing together mm-hmm. is a perfect unit. It is. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have done it without these guys. You know, you know and for us, it, it really allowed us to stay together as a crew when we had our when we had our valleys, and then but staying staying humble when we hit those peaks. You know, and. You know, not not resting on our laurels, but always trying to improve, always trying to bring something good and and staying true to the idea of, you know, the idea of definition of cigars is like having making sure that people know that they can f- define their own cigar experience and to make it a more inclusive thing. 
because that's one thing that I got into as I got as you know, I've only been smoking cigars eight years and I know they've been smoking longer than I have. But just the idea of learning about, hey, this is what in my mind, I, my mental model was, hey, this is something that older older guys did. Because I, when I worked in, in as an engineer, it'd be like the older guys that, that worked in the plants that has always had cigars in their mouths. Right. So whenever they took a break, they just be just light it up, you know. And so for me, I'm like, I was, you know, 30 years old. And I'm like. How can I get into cigars? And I tried one at a sales meeting uh, in Fort Myers, Florida. I went to a nice cigar bar by this sushi restaurant we went to after dinner. And I kind of I didn't get hooked immediately, but I just liked the atmosphere. And you then enjoyed I, the community. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I ended up I ended up uh, maybe a month later going to a cigar lounge in Austin. Oh, the old heroes and legacies. And I asked questions. I was like, I really want to try to get into this because I, I, I want to have a way to kind of relax because I had it was a chaotic time in my life, you know, and I'm like. I just needed something to do to kind of relax at the end of the day. And I just asked questions and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm a whiskey guy. What's a good cigar to drink with whiskey? And the tobacconist just showed me different cigars to try. And I love it. Speaking of whiskey, you see we have a few. Yes. Would you like one or are you I, good? I would like some. Okay, awesome. I had a couple of glasses in here for you. Is there any certain one you'd like to try? I would like to try the Double Oak. I, 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 I saw you had your <laughs> yeah, eye on I that did. one. And <laughs> I, I was just talking about that earlier with the guys. Yeah. I was like. It has so much flavor. It does. I I mean, the regular Woodford Reserve mm-hmm. is really good, but this double oak, I was like, it's nice. Yeah. It's full of flavors. Yeah. Here you go, brother. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. So, yeah, I mean, that's how it, that's how it started with me, you know, getting to cigars. And, you know, from there, it's really it was really more of, you know, I guess preparing me for being in the in, being in the business, you know, as far as I've I've met different vendor reps, I've met different owners, and having those conversations with people like I'm a fan of your cigars, like, you know, what is it about it that makes your cigars unique and everything like that? And for us, it was like we're a group of cigar smokers. This is not a casual thing for us. This is what we do at each other's homes, on somebody's patio, at a cigar lounge. Like the, we we're friends that did this anyway. Right. When whenever I think of a good Friday night or a good Saturday night. I don't think I want to go to a bar. Yeah. I can't think of anything I would rather do mm-hmm. than go hang out with my cigar friends exactly. and smoke cigars. Exactly. And the great thing about it is when I do that, I make new friends. Exactly. I mean, like the first time I met you in person, yeah. I was sitting back with some other people I had never met before. Really? And okay. we're having a great time. Awesome. And then I met you. Yeah. And it's just like, that's the way the cigar community works. And that's that's the and that's one thing that, you know, because for a lot of people, our brand is like has been like their introduction to cigars. You know, we, we sell it different pub, in, in public in different places. And people are like, I've never had a cigar before. And we walk them through everything. And they're like, yeah, we'll cut it and light it for you so you can get used to it. And like, don't inhale, you know, just pull it, just pull on it and blow it out. And so we're, we're kind of like a cigar tutorial for a lot of people as well, too. But it's like part of that is just our personalities as individuals. You know, we don't want anybody to feel like, like I said, defining the experience of, of smoking is like smoking cigars. is like you don't want to feel make somebody feel rejected. Right. You know, you want them to feel comfortable because, as you said, you can meet somebody you've never known before. And you walk out as friends because of cigars a lot of times. And for me, it's been like that for years. It's always been like that. And you know, one of the things I love about being in a cigar community is it's a huge network. Yeah. Because it's like, man, all of a sudden, I need a plumber. Yeah. Hey, which one of you guys knows a plumber? Exactly. Bam. I got a plumber I know that I can trust because this guy told me the guy's a good plumber. But that's what happened with us on Tuesday. We did a private event for a uh, social organization. And... Uh, a good friend of mine who's who uh, grew up with my sister he's like he's like a younger brother to me he was like hey man i want to put you in touch with someone because he said he wanted cigars for his event he's like i know a guy and he happened and the guy happened to be one of my fraternity brothers as well too so it worked out well and they were like they you know we had a good time we brought a good atmosphere the owner of the the coffee shop that we were at said hey we would love for you guys to do a cigar etiquette night you know so get to get people comfortable with the idea on the patio or the organizers of the, of the event, they were like, you know, whenever we need cigars for any of our events, we'll reach out to you. I'm like, hey, let, nice. us, let us know. You know, and we made two business connections in one night just for being us. You right. Know, not, not, not doing anything special, just like setting up, having cigars ready, having cutters and lighters available for people that didn't have any. And there were people that have heard about us. There were people that had not heard about us. And they bought cigars anyway. They were like, hey, I'll, I might not smoke it now, but I'll take it home and try it later and put it in my humidor. So, 
you know, it's really the community is amazing and the community is growing, especially, you know, amongst women, amongst black women, amongst, you know, amongst younger black people. Because I've had like, you know, younger cousins that reach out to me and they want to try cigars. My nephews, I'm like, yeah, like whenever you guys want to do it, I'll walk you through everything. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I'm 52. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, you were a younger guy. Yeah. But it's great to see. The twenty-something guys exactly starting to come in. We we've got a good friend that listens to the show. Uh, we call him Young Buck, but mm -hmm. his name's John, and he's twenty-one mm -hmm. and he's smoking cigars on video hearse with us, and nice. he's smoking good sticks. Nice. And I love seeing young people understand the community exactly because it's not smoking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could take away the cigar and leave us in the community and we'd have a great time. Mm -hmm. But what brought us together was the cigar. Exactly. And I mean, it's one thing that um, a good friend of mine that actually, you know, was was kind of responsible for bringing a lot of me and my partners together. So we were as far as like a place to kind of hang out and converse and kind of that community for cigar smoking. Um, I always said that, you know, during my time smoking cigars, cigars is I consider the last true bastion of being a gentleman in the world today where being a gentleman is expected and accepted to where you have more and more women smoke cigar smokers. Regardless of that, you may have all the tools in the world and everything, have the knowledge. If you're in my presence, you're not going to cut and light your own cigar. That's just that's just me. And that's how we are. So our, our friends that like to hang out with us and smoke with us, they uh they uh they they know, hey, if there, I'm Deborah goes interrupting the show again. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I see that. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Never notices that you're not wearing a ring. So so that gives you the freedom to travel more, not being tied down. Or are you tied down? No, no, no. It, 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 I travel just because. I, I, actually, I haven't traveled as much because of how COVID normally does has, has changed everything. Oh, it's crazy. Even, even even with my job and my job changed three years ago to where I didn't have as big of a sales territory as I did before. But I've always, I've been coming to Abilene like for 12 years, even with my previous job. So coming out far west or this, this far west is like, I'm kind of like used to it. So I've seen how much this area has grown. And so when I met you guys, when I met you and, and, and Brian and Jay at the Leaf, it's like, I was surprised at how, you know, how much Abilene has grown in this area. You know, I have, and you know, we recently, uh, well, Jay moved. Yeah. And the new shop is just so yeah. nice compared to the old shop, which was like cozy and home. Yeah. But this one is like kicking it up like 10 notches. Yeah. Cause I, cause I would come into town, I would stop by and get cigars, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay in smoke. I may have stayed in smoke maybe one time, but yeah, it was like, you know, to have to be able to like work here in town and have a place to go after I'm done working to hang out and have a cigar is, is amazing. That's what I, I've always tried to do in my travels, you know, have a place to where I could, you know, when I travel to Austin, have a place to go. If I was in, um, uh, out, you know, Louisiana, I had a place to go, you know, so that kind of thing. Now, part. what part of Louisiana did you go to? Uh, I, I, I used to go all the way to Monroe, but I mainly go to Shreveport, Bossier now. Okay. And so there, there are a few uh, spots out there that I, I go to just to hang out. Cause I know uh, one place I know, uh, it's a group of owner it's an ownership group. I know half the owners. Oh, okay. and so they're good friends because I used to I used to come into town and hang out and smoke cigars with them anyway. So when they finally went into the business and opened a, a cigar lounge, I'm like, hey, you know, right around that time, definition cigars are starting to build up. And I was like, whenever you guys need cigars, we're we're here because I because I know kind of keeping in mind about different states once we start expanding out of Texas outside of Texas, it's just like everybody has different tobacco taxes. Right. I see. I see why people love coming to Texas to get cigars. Yes. You know, <laughs> like my friends in Louisiana will drive all the way to Longview to Tobacco Junction just to get cigars because it's cheaper. It's worth the it's hour drive. That much cheaper. It's, it, it was for them. They're like, man, it's worth the hour drive. They had the, they, they have a huge selection of cigars, and it was cheaper. And you know, for me, it'd be like a cigar I would get for like eight or nine bucks here in Louisiana would be like thirteen. Wow. Yeah, just that. That's how high the taxes were. I remember going to a cigar lounge off Canal Street, in New Orleans. And I saw LF, and it was like I was like it was maybe a year of into smoking cigars. So I smoke LFDs a lot, and I was like, "Why is this LFD fourteen dollars? Why? You know, that's the kind of I was just like. So when I realized, you know, when we are able to get into other states, it's an accomplishment because that means we were able to, you know, meet that cut meet that customer at a point at a price point to where they were still able to make money. Yeah, you know, cause that's because I'm like Illinois, California. Louisiana, New York, New York. Yeah. 
They're, yeah. they're paying 75% tax. It's amazing. It's, and that's one thing, you know, you learn. I mean, I knew of, I had an idea about it as a cigar smoker, but now being in the business, it's like, oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's something to keep in mind, you know, to where it's like, it's not just like, it can, sometimes it can be as quick as a conversation and you're in a cigar lounge. Sometimes it takes time. It takes conversations. Well, that's something that we're talking about on this actual episode mm-hmm. with me and Bryant is make sure that you are part of Cigar Rights of America. Yeah. Because they're trying to pass a bill right now mm-hmm. where they're wanting to tax federal tax on cigars at like a thousand percent. Yeah, I've, I've been a member five years nice yeah i've been i've been a cr member for five years so yeah i i i, keep, I get the emails all the time I, I pay attention to that and so did we because we were worried about the whole you know changes in taxes once we, and we started into, we, i mean we just got started as a business and we were worried about that we were yeah. like oh my god like like is 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 are we not even going to be able to be in business that's why that's what made last year such a um such a good thing you know for us it was like you know i i we were like we got through 2020 it's it, it's such a great great way. No, thinking the year before, we not be may not be able to be in business, right? Because of the taxes and and all the issues with the federal with the FDA and everything like that. So yeah, the, we just need the political people to keep their hands out of the pie. I told I totally agree. I totally and, agree. I mean, if we can get that to be accomplished, then we're home run. Because I was I I looked at that even as a consumer, even before we got into the business, it's like I don't want I don't, I don't want it to be harder for me to get cigars, right? Or buy cigars. Like, I'm like I'm not trying to get Cubans. I smoke, I sneak, smoke Nicaraguan. Right. You know, it's a, big, it's a big deal it's to me. Legal. You know, it's legal. The stuff that's legal. So, yeah. you know, so, I mean, for me, like, we, and even get into the business, we were like, oh, my God. It's like, that was something always in the back of our mind whenever we, we met together and we're planning things and, and you know, getting different faces of cigars. We're just hoping that the price doesn't skyrocket because of taxes. Right. And thankfully, it hasn't been to that point. But, you know, I definitely keep 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 my eye on that. You know, I'll probably renew my uh, membership soon anyways. I think it expires this month, actually. So, but I've been a member for about five years. And that that's about the same for me. Yeah. And once I found out about him, and we've had back when Glenn Loop was mm-hmm. the executive director for him, we've had him on the show many times really? for okay. updates. Okay. And, you know, I love the PCA and Cigar Rights of America because they keep us informed mm-hmm. on the legal front. I love it. Yeah. And nice. I tell you what, I wish we had Mark Rubio in Texas <laughs> because he understands the cigar industry yes. to where Senator Ted Cruz needs to pull his head out of his ass I agree. because he's not helping us on the cigar front at all. I know. And yeah. I'm not a political guy, yeah. but when it gets into you mess with my cigars, cigars yeah. now I'm a little political. I mean, it, and especially with how many boutique brands like my, like ours are from Texas. Right. You know, or, or like they're based in Texas. And it's like Texas is, is, has been a breeding ground for cigar brands the last five or six years. Oh yeah, yeah I've, you know, I've I've got to think there's at least probably ten to twelve cigar companies in Texas. Yeah, I mean I, I've 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 known Ryan Rodriguez from Ohio for years. So I, I used to buy cigars all the time, you know. And of course, you got a uh, Black Label, a trading company based out of Texas. And you and, got the Rojas, you and, got McAuliffe, and, you and, got Ezra Zion, Ezra Zion. Yeah, you have uh, Roma Craft, Roma Craft. Yeah, uh, Skip and Mike are great guys. Yeah, Southern Draw, Southern Draw. Yeah, I mean the list goes on and on. Oh, and also um, the War Fighters. Yes. You know, they were established in Nebraska, mm-hmm. and when they saw how te- cheap it was in Texas, they yeah. moved their whole facility down here. Exactly. You know, I'm not surprised by that, but I mean, that we, we've been a breeding ground for cigar brands for the last, like, five or six years, and it's like, because I've seen them grow, right. and I, I've, I've been supporter of supporting them, and they've supported me, you know? And that's <laughs> why I want to keep the federal tax off of the cigars. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and I, I was actually talking to another cigar shop owner this morning, and from Enfuegos, mm-hmm. And I was talking to him about it, and I was we were talking about that, you know, the taxation on a federal level. And I mm-hmm. said, isn't it crazy that they're allowing marijuana sales nationwide? Well, all the, all the states that uh, vote on it. Yeah. But because it's not legal federally, yeah. there's no tax on it. Exactly. So there, and last year alone, marijuana was $17.5 billion in sales. Yeah. Look at the tax revenue they're missing on a drug that's illegal in America. Yeah. Not states, yeah. but on the federal, federal level. level yeah. And now you want to come mess with my cigars. Yeah. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with so, that. So. Well, hey, man, thanks for joining us on the show. I'm yeah. going to get one of your partners on here. No We're going to talk man. with him for a minute. But thank you so much. How's that How's that bourbon? It's good. I, it's been a while since I've had the double oak, man. It's, it's great. It's powerful great. in flavor. 
Smooth, yes. but good in flavor. Man, but it's good talking to you, Rob. Good Thanks for having me on, man. Always, man. Thank you. It was good hanging out with you last night, too. Yeah, same here. Welcome back. We have another special guest from Definition Cigars. We got the one and only Chad. What's going on, brother? Not a whole lot. You know, down here in Abilene, having a good time. Looking forward to our uh, cutting light here at Leaf uh, in a few hours. So, Hey, man, let's yeah, pull that mic up time. real close to you. Right here. Oh, good. All right. Gotcha. So you're in town for a cut and light at the Leaf. Yes, sir. And the Leaf started carrying Definition Cigars, what, about four months ago, five months ago? Five. And I think we've had some good success with the Definition Cigars out of the Abilene shop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Leaf is, uh, has been a real, good, um, a real good supporter and customer of uh, Definition Cigars. So, uh, man, we're just looking forward to going out this afternoon, meeting some of the people who've been uh, supporting us and, uh, you know, kind of see what we uh you know, see how we can grow it and see what's going on, man. So, nice. So yeah. I want to know a little bit about your history. We're, we're before cigars, before definition cigars, mm-hmm. even before cigars, like where did you grow up? So I grew up in, in Dallas, uh, kind of split time. Grew up originally in Oak Cliff, moved out to uh, DeSoto. So uh, me and Neo didn't grow up, you know, real far apart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, where I don't know where DeSoto is. Where's that at? DeSoto is right um, south of I-20. Okay. It's basically right on the other side. So Lancaster, DeSoto, Duncanville, they all kind of mess together. Gotcha. Right. Okay, cool, man. Mm-hmm. And so I got to ask you this. What year did you graduate high school? 1999. All right. I, was, I thought you were going to no, say like save the best for last. I thought so. you were going to say like 2010. Oh, hell no. Yeah. He looks yeah. like a young man. Right, I got gray hair and my, my beard, <laughs> man. So, yeah, 1999, you know, they had to save the best for last. So. so how did you get into smoking cigars originally? Uh, originally, uh, we, we kind of all uh, started with, uh, you know, smoking with uh, Cigar Boys Club. So I um, it, honestly it was just curiosity. So right. um, I used to see a lot of people doing it, and I, I wasn't a real big smoker. Um, at the time, so, you know, started off with Connecticut's, you know, trying to, you know, get, get my palate wet. Right. And, uh, you know, and over time, you know, kind of grew up and graduated to, you know, more medium full and full bodied cigars. So, um, I probably started smoking about eight, nine years ago. Um, and, uh, man, but since then it's, it's, it's been a real, uh, real, real passion and a, and a, and a habit. It's a great journey. Isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, especially when you start, well, like you said, you start out with Connecticut, it's nothing too bold, and that's good, because that's the way I recommend a lot of young smokers to start out, is like something light, Connecticut, uh, some naturals, and that's not how I started. I started full-blown, oh, you, you went straight, kick you in the straight, balls, yeah. <laughs> straight and, to the mountaintop. And, All you right. know, the bad thing about doing that is you ruin your palate, because that's all you know. And then whenever I'd been smoking, probably for like three or four years, I was like, well, what is it a Connecticut? So then I would smoke Connecticut's and, you know, they were super light. Right. And I was like, yeah, that's not for me. But then I started experiencing with some other Connecticut's and I found some Connecticut's that actually had a lot of flavor. And so I kind of did it backwards from everybody else. And so I love cigars from the darkest full body cigar all the way to the lightest shade Connecticut as long as it has flavor and so that's where I am now and I mean it's like wow look at that I I missed out in the beginning when everybody else was doing it the right way I kind of did it the wrong way or or at least a different (laughs) way right so do do you remember the first cigar uh that you actually smoked or, 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 I, or, or one of the ones up top that you kind of I don't got introduced to because the way I started with me and a good friend that had been best friends for thirty something years, we would get together about once every three months, and we would go to the cigar shop. We didn't know nothing, and we would spend twenty bucks on a cigar because we were like, if you spend twenty bucks, it's got to be something good, right? right? And we would go out and smoke it because we thought that was cool, and I really didn't catch on to cigar smoking for probably about two years and i smoked a christoff and after smoking that christoff i was like holy shit that was good and then i was hooked ever since and so i don't remember the first cigar 
I the two cigars I remember is when I smoked the Kristoff, and in 2016 I smoked a cheap bamboo Sinclair cigar, but I smoked it with my dad before he passed away on the front porch. So those are my two most memorable cigars. Yeah. How about you? What was your first cigar? I, I think I, it was a which one is the uh, connect? It might be a Leva G. Oh yeah, right. I just gave her one. Right. So that was one of my introductory uh, cigars. Um, and I smoked a few other Connecticut's. Uh, one, one of the ones I, I liked was uh, the Caldwell Eastern Standard. Oh, great smoke. Uh, so that Connecticut provided a little more, it was a little more robust, a little more flavor to it uh, than, than the Oliva G. And then I kind of I kind of grew from there. Uh, but yeah, that that was my thing. I was like, I, I remember the first time I walked in the cigar shop, I was like, because, you know, you hear a lot of stuff about cigars you know, my dad was like, oh, you know, I heard they make you sick and they make you dizzy and this and that. So I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know if I really want to get into that. Uh, Have you but, ever accidentally inhaled? Yes. Well, that will make you sick. You're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Uh, especially earlier mm-hmm. on in my in, in my smoking, um, you know, experience, you know, you, you kind of you smoke, inhale, retro, and you cough. Oh, man. Sometimes oh, yeah. when I've had a lot to drink. I'll accidentally just get a little bit, and I'm like, "Whoo! Almost, almost did that." Oh yeah. And because if you do, man, it's rough. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, whenever they started getting guys together to start Definition Cigars, right. what were, what were you thinking on that? I mean, were you like, "I don't know about this. Does this sound like a great idea? I've got a bunch of good dudes here." What was your thought process? I mean, my personal thought process. Um, you know, of course, I think, in, in, you know, initially, you may be a little skeptical um, just considering, you know, how, uh, you know, how grand the scape is of cigars. You know, it's 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 tons of them. Yeah. So um, my thing is, you know, I, I think it's kind of like, you know, where, where will we fit in amongst, you know, all of the giants? Um, so uh, but I did have faith in the people that we assembled together. Uh, that we would curate a good a good cigar because we have all, a, a range of smoking experience, smoking palates. So I knew once we found something, you know, kind of that 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 we all agreed upon, uh, it would be a good smoke to start with. So well, one of the things that I love about the group of guys that you have behind Definition Cigars is that you all have different backgrounds. You have some guys that are number guys. You have some guys that are sales guys. I heard you were a teacher. Yes, teacher and a coach. And a coach. So, I mean, all of you guys bring a special quality to the team that if you just had all cigar guys, you just have all cigar guys. But you draw from each other because each one of you have your strong suit. Right. Yeah, no no doubt. So, um, it's it's, it's funny because we... uh, you know, like Tuesday, I have a I have a middle school soccer meeting uh, <laughs> with 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 the district. So uh, I'm I'm hoping once they put the schedule out, it doesn't it doesn't impact my ability to be able to uh, you know kind of travel around with with, with cigars and, and help out you know as I see fit. But um, the, the the team we've assembled is is great group of guys, and like I said, man, we were all friends and smoked together before we went into business. Right. So. I think that uh, in itself makes it a lot easier to do business. Um, so, you know, again, we, you know, even if we may not all agree on something, uh, at the end of the day, uh, whatever decision we come to is going to be for the for, for the betterment of the company. Gotcha. Right. And that's a lot easier to do when you have friendships and relationships with people. You know, all of these guys have been to my parents' house. We've all ate together. Um, you know, so that's, that's something. So you are that's close. Big. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes it easier to work through adversity when you have a friendship uh, versus, you know, if it's just five random people. So y'all, look, there's five of you. Right. Y'all hold things to a vote? Yeah. Because there's a tiebreaker if you got five. <laughs> hey, ma- majority rule. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, yeah. And see, like with Cigar Talk, I'm the only vote. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not a democracy right. on this side. <laughs> So, no, that's cool, though, because, I mean, the way you guys formed a company with guys that are so close knit. And I mean, that's that's a rarity, man. Right. Yeah, it, it's it's um, 
it's good. I think it's a it's a it's a blessing, man, to be able to work. You know, we all call each other. Uh, you know, these are my brothers. So even even though we, you know, didn't come from the same set of parents, we've we've all found commonality. You know, with cigars and with our, our bond and friendship, so it makes it a lot easier to, um, you know, to do business. Now, who's to, who's the oldest of the five? Jerwin. Jerwin. Yeah, Jerwin. And who's Jerwin the actually, youngest? Be Neo. Neo. Right. Neo's All the right. youngest. So, right. so he's Everybody the youngest. He's 38. Right. How old is the oldest? 48. Okay. 49. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. there's a yeah, decade. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I didn't right. know if you were all like right about the same age, but I mean, there's a I, little. I, I think everybody else is closer in age. Jerwin is a little, a little older. <laughs> right. He might he might get a little, little upset for, hey, hey, for he, letting you know, but he yeah. should. Well, just Jerwin, <laughs> just so I'm with you, brother. You're the oldest. You should get two votes. <laughs> That's why I see that. So. Where do you guys see your cigar company in the next year and next five years? I mean, because really, you're two years in. Right. You survived the pandemic, which is right. an accomplishment in itself. So now where do you guys plan on what's, what's your strategy for the next 12 months? I mean, what's your goals right now? Um. The, the, the next 12 months, man, we really just kind of uh, concentrating on, uh, you know, doing the things that we couldn't do within COVID. Ah, so, gotcha. Right. So we couldn't really get out. We couldn't touch the people. Um, it was a lot of, uh, you know, we, we basically were, I know at least for the first three or four months, we were kind of restricted to online sales. So um, I, I shout out to the customers who actually went online and and uh, you know bought cigars because that really that really helped us kept that, that, you going yeah, they kept us afloat um so the next 12 months i think we're going to make a, a, a concerted effort to reach those people um that we didn't get to reach in in 2020 go out so again, and now you get to come out in person and do cutting lights exactly. and meet the people face to face and i tell you what i think it's very important that consumers get to know the men behind the brand. Right. And I know Neo said, you know, this isn't about us. This is about the cigar. This is about the community. But I think it helps when a consumer can put a face or faces with the brand. Right. Because if I know a brand and I know the guys behind the brand are good dudes, right. it makes me love the brand. Right. But if you have a good cigar, and trust me, there's a lot of good cigars out there. Right. And I can't speak highly of the men behind the cigar it's a turnoff you know what i mean right. so now you get the opportunity to go out and see people and meet them face to face like you right. did last night exactly right i mean you ended up at a bachelor party last night and didn't even plan on it <laughs> right man and it's a side note man but those sandwiches were excellent at, at i didn't get party. any sandwiches man, you missed out man yeah, the, the 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 ham and turkey sandwich was that from that the grain had. theory you know what? Where were the, they, know where they didn't really tell us where they were from, but, you know, we were kind of, I was like, man, I'm hungry. So we, you know, we're walking out the door and they got this tray of sandwiches. So I was like, go ahead and take some. So I was like, took a chance. I was like, yo, this this is Man, I, mu I must have left better. just too early. Yeah, that sandwich was a lot better than, than, than what I expected. But um, I had uh, Sonic. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I did. I left too early. Right. But so. It's uh it's it's good, man. Just like today, um, I, I'm you know I think me and and, and Neo and Jamal, man, we're kind of excited to get out and meet the people who have been uh, here in Abilene uh, supporting the brand. So um, I think you know the the leaf has been, and actually just walking through the humidor yesterday, man, it's even it's even more of an honor to be a part of that uh, humidor. Um, it's a nice humidor. Oh yeah, yeah I mean real nice. I know you guys live in the Metroplex, so you're used to big cigar lounges. But going from the humidor that we had at the other old location, it was like a 12-foot by 12-foot box. And it was from the floor to the <laughs> ceiling. Now, man, you can walk around in there. It's right. all lined in cedar. Jay has made a beautiful humidor. And so it's yes. awesome to have you guys' cigars in there. All right. Yes, it, it is. Um and so I, th I think Neo kind of came out and made the uh, made the connection with 
uh, Jay, because I know he comes out here a lot for work. Um, so the, the the fact that he was able to, you know, try cigars and, and like them enough to actually put them in the in the humidor, and consequently they're doing well. So, right. Um, and it's just a testament to you know the amount of work you know that we put in as a, as a group, as a team curating cigars, and, and I'm just glad the uh, people like it. So, oh yeah, man. Right. I love your cigars. I love the bands. I love the wrappers. Man, y'all are putting some beautiful tobacco on those wrappers. I mean, you're just so shiny and oily, which I love. I mean, tell us about that stick you're smoking right there. So this one is the Integrity. This is uh, originally a seven-year age tobacco binder filler. Hold it up high right here towards the camera. There you go. Yeah. So it's All right. So they can see it now. All right. That's a beautiful stick, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Box press. Um, seven again, seven year age uh, binder and filler, four year age San Andreas Mexican wrapper Ooh. on this one. So uh, this for for my money is actually man, this is one of the best cigars that we that that we offer. Um, I I and I, I I'm, a, I'm a sucker for San Andreas. Yeah, I love it. And it's four years age San Andreas. Very nice. It's a good looking stick. And what'd you say that one's called? The integrity. Integrity. See, what I love about your cigars is I'm always telling people about your cigars, but I'm always saying, hey, when you go into the humidor, you walk over here, that's where they are. Check out the blue one and the Maduro, I mean, the uh, maroon one. I love the maroon, and then I also love the green because that's the Cameroon. Yes, sir. Man, y'all's Cameroon is nice. And I, I'm actually a Cameroon fan. And so. That's rare because it's, it's not a lot of big. Uh, Cameroon fans, and, right? But you know, but I think people are scared of the name Cameroon or something. But I, I think once you dive into the Cameroons, it's a beautiful stick. Right? It's smooth. It's silky smooth. Yeah. So, um, so I guess kind of back to what you were referencing. So you were referencing the light blue or the royal blue, the band. royal blue, the royal blue band. Okay. So yeah. that one is the um, equalizer. The equalizer, right. and then the maroon. Is the conception conception? Yeah, he told me that earlier already, yeah, but right. I just say maroon because the maroon stick, man, that's a beautiful stick too. You could take the band off, and I'd be like, yeah, I want to buy that. Yeah, uh, nice, nice uh, box press with it, um, and that is actually one of our uh, more popular cigars as well. Um, one of my go-to favorites in in our line is is the conception. Okay, uh, so man, great smoke. If you haven't tried it. So which was Try the first it. cigar y'all came out with? The first one is the uh, was the Nobility, all right? So over time, um, we kind of, I would say, refined it, and, and it ended up coming back uh, as the Equalizer. Right? Oh, okay. Right. Cool. So we kind of, you know, for, for customers' sake, we improved it. Right. You know, binder, wrapper, You filler. evolved. Yeah. yeah. Comes with, you know, with, with, with time. We, we evolved as a company. Um, and we were able to put out a better product, you know, and that's no, you know, knock on what it originally was, but you know, anytime you can upgrade your product, Hey, there's more, always a square tobacco. one, right? Got to start 10 somewhere. years from now, right? T- y- square one is going to be replaced by a hundred squares. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You, you exactly. got, trust me. If you go back and listen to episode one of cigar talk, you'll be like, man, those dudes <laughs> suck. Those dudes really suck. So, you know, there's always a square one. So I was just curious what your first cigar was, because I know you guys have evolved, and I see the cigars the, like the light blue. Tell me right. about the light blue. That's a new one coming out. Right. The light blue is the 919 blend. Um, so that one um, is a uh, – it comes in Maduro and Habano, uh, Ecuadorian uh, wrapper, Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano. Um, also has a um, – it has a kind of a mixture of uh, uh, Honduran and Nicaraguan tobacco in the filler. filler. Oh, in the right. okay. Now, which one do you prefer if you got to take a choice? If I had to take a choice, I would smoke the Habano. All right. right. See, I love Habano, <laughs> man. I think I think you get so much more flavor out of that wrapper. Right. And don't get me wrong, I still love Maduros, but if I'm going to take one, I'm taking the Habano. Right. That's just me. And then, then you throw in a San Andreas. I'm like, mm, I'm really having a tough choice. Right. But and I love the way you guys are mixing it up so much. I mean, right. you're a, you're really appealing to so many different cigar smokers by having those choices. Right. 
So um, I know what, what one of the things we have, it's a, uh, you know, we, we have about nine blends, uh, so to speak. So um, I know we talk a lot and um, between those nine blends, you will find something that you like, uh, whether it's the prolific blend that's kind of on, on the milder, medium end, or if you want to go all the way up to a Phoenix or Integrity uh, with, with, with the Maduro um, and, and, you know, and, and blends in between. So uh, just giving the customers variety. So, right. hey, if you, you know, depending on where and you are. And all shapes and sizes, too. Right, all shapes and sizes. So if, you, if, if you're more of a, a, a milder, uh, medium guy, medium, medium full, or if you like, you know, if you want to climb the ladder and go up to a Maduro, uh, you know, we pretty much can, you know, accommodate you, you know, smoke wise. So, well, I love the thought process behind each cigar because you are making a line that covers so many different cigar smokers. Like you said, there's a cigar in your line for just about everybody, unless they're wanting a swiss your sweet no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> then they're gonna have to go down to the piggly yeah, wiggly yeah, yeah gotta go to the corner store for, yeah for, for the, for the swiss your sweets but um uh you know and, and, and we also have a, a a flavored line you know as well oh really so, i didn't know that yeah so uh that uh particular um uh branch of of, of definition kind of kind of launched inside of COVID. um so uh and, and as strange as it sounds, man, that those cigars actually helped keep us afloat too, man. It was a, it was a lot of people. Um, there's a lane for fla- for flavored cigars, dude. So did, people, are, uh, more people, like them, people enjoy them. More flavored cigars are sold than any other kind of cigar. That's how Drew Estate made it, and I don't know how because I don't like flavored cigars. Right. But there's a market for them. And a lot of guys that have never smoked cigars, I'll even point them towards a flavored cigar just right. to let them get their beak wet. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, I don't want to give them something I'm smoking because then they're going to get sick and they're not going to have enjoy it. Right. So there's a, a place for flavored cigars. There's a place for non-flavored cigars. And so I think it's a very smart way to approach the market because if you want to uh, appeal to the masses you got to give people what they want exactly yeah so i i, I remember in in the beginning we were kind of on the fence about about flavored cigars because because we don't smoke them right so um i mean i think we've all probably have tried it you know uh one time or another um actually i've I, tried it right and i've had a couple um at the time i, I don't i guess you can call it a phase and I probably went through. Um, <laughs> I, I smoked, uh, I smoked some 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 Java Maduros, Java Latte. Um, See, I tried the Java because right. I thought it's going to taste like coffee. I love coffee, right? And then I smoked it, and I was like, "That's horrible." <laughs> so it's not for me. But you know, I know my brother, his wife, she loves those, right? And so, I mean, there's a cigar for everyone. Exactly. And you can't say, well, you're not a cigar smoker if you smoke infused cigars. That's not true. And I had a friend of mine tell me the other week, uh, actually, he owns a cigar lounge, and he was like, if you ever have a flavored cigar or a sweet tip, he knows I don't like those. But somebody gave me one. He said, cut it and smoke it backwards. That way you don't have the sweet tip in your mouth, and it's still quality tobacco. I tried that. And I still didn't like it. So, <laughs> but I did try it. I'm always up to try something. Right. Yeah. I, I, I remember my a cu- couple of other ones, you know, like the Nub um, Cafe series. You got the espresso, you got the cappuccino, you have uh, different ones. So, you know, some people, they like to smoke early in the morning, a cup of coffee. Um, so, you know, it, there is something in the definition line for everybody. Right. So, um, again, we have. Uh, uh, flavored cigars that are kind of more on the, you know, kind of chocolate, vanilla. And then we also have some fruity blends as well, blueberry and peach. So, uh, and in certain, uh, uh, you know, c- certain venues, certain areas, man, they are actually popular. Uh, one of the uh, bigger um, flavored cigar markets we have is with uh, Cigar Art and Bishop. And they, oh, yeah. Yeah, they buy them out. So, um you know, again, it's just providing that variety for people, for customers, so we can kind of hit everybody where you know where they are in their uh, you know uh, smoking uh, experience. Yeah, you know, guys that are smoking 
flavored cigars now in five years they may still be smoking them or they may not ever smoke them again you know what i mean they might have moved on to something else so you know i had a friend that turned me on to i don't know what it was like a a blondie or something and i smoked that and i was like that's horrible (laughs) but he loved them so you know yeah i and i used to make fun of people if they smoked those and then i learned it's not about what they're smoking it's about them being part of the community right so, yeah, um, you know, and it, it, again, a lot of smoking is subjective. So uh, somebody may not like an integrity, but they may like a flavor cigar. They may not like a flavor cigar, but they may like a 919 or a Phoenix. So a lot of it is uh, palate based. So what what are you used to smoking? What do you like smoking? Um, and then, you know, hey, sometimes if you want to, you know, branch outside of that, and try something new. Um, like I said, we we will pretty much offer um, everything across the spectrum for you guys. Now, to, uh, y'all have enjoy. one cigar. I think it's called the Walking Stick. Yeah. That is a phenomenal Lancero. I'm not a Lancero guy, but holy crap, that's a good Lancero. Debbie over there, she's like, hell yeah, right. she loves Lanceros. <laughs> but that Lancero, I smoked it, and I was like, holy crap, that's good. And so, you know, I never say I won't smoke something because right. you never know. Yeah, that um, that that Lancero took us a it took us a little while to to, to, to come up, curate something that, you know, we, we felt, um, you know, felt confident with going to market. And uh, I know once, uh, you know, once we hit that one, that that satisfied everybody's palate. So well, you hit it out of the park with that one. Yeah, so. That's a solid smoke. Well, hey, man, thanks for swinging by and talking with us for a bit. We're going to get your next partner on the show and find right. out a little bit about him, too. But thank you so much. Hey, and thanks for the, the ride last night. Oh, yeah. I've never had that before, but that was fantastic. All right. Yeah. And I'm not usually a big rye guy, but I think I had a couple of those. So thanks. Right. Thank you for the, uh, hey, for, for you, the old scout. Let me know when you're right. ready for something else. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. All right, brother. Thank you, man. All right. Appreciate it.